finally. All right. Let's go with the chat. <laughs> All right. Oh, what's up? What's up, chat? Are we live? Are we crispy? We are live. Damn, bro. Like, yo, for real. This was annoying. Mm-hmm. Like, yo, like, for real. Like, I started the stream, obviously, on OBS. And then YouTube says stream is healthy. Excellent. But the go live button would not green up. It would just stay grayed out. And I'm like, what the fuck? Like, yo, just like PC's annoying, man. Y'all PC gamers go through this shit just to play a game? Like, golly, mm-hmm. bro. That shit is crazy. See. But anyway, man, your only friend is YouTube Streets Porter Rock 77. We're back with another 60 frames no lag podcast right here, of course. Um, we got J Dub in here, the antagonizer, antagonizer in chief. Um, I seen Extreme in the chat. I don't know if he's gonna be able to rock out with us, but hopefully he can. Um, we got some good topics today, but we you know we're just gonna we're gonna do a little chit chat real quick before we move on. Yo, J Dub, what's up, man? What's going on? What's going on, man? What's going on, chat? What's going on? Look, I've been uh in that Dragon Dogma. I've been in between Dragon's Dogma 2, Rise of Ronin, and Final Fantasy 7 Rebirth, man. Mm-hmm. And then uh Stella yeah. Yams demo came out. So, you know, I was toggling all of the, between all them games. So, yeah. you know, it's it's I still gotta get back on Pacific Rim. Uh, Pacific, uh, Pacific Drive, not Rim. Um, that's the movie. <laughs> that's the movie. Yeah, that's the movie. Uh, Pacific Drive. Listen, if you're a PlayStation gamer, man, it's a shitload of games to play, and uh, it's just hard to manage. You know, and if you're an Xbox gamer, hey, you know, yeah, keep waiting. Time, you know you what I'm saying? Keep waiting. Time. Yeah. You got, you got plenty of time out there. All right. It's good to hear yeah. you, man. It's good to see you, brother, man. Man, yeah, that's right. There's a lot of there's a lot of content, a lot of games to uh, juggle through. Stuff like mm-hmm. that. Um, then we just got MLB. Yeah, yeah. Um, that just came out. We have um, what else we have coming up with Stellar yeah, Stellar Blade. They're about to we, raise the cap for Hell Divers to 150. Yeah, yeah, for yeah. That. So that's a lot. So you know that's a lot of content coming up. Oh yeah. So yeah. These we, these guys are changing. They're yeah, adding they got, stuff they, every they got week, ready week, man. To go to go that yeah. high, they got to do mm-hmm. something already because. That'll get yeah. repetitive trying to go for 150 doing the same thing. So they gotta have something planned. Yeah. And and and, and this this kind of brought me to um a discussion we had maybe months and months ago, but I think I said it previously on here. I don't see these games and service games. I, I I can see why it's so difficult to break into that particular market. Because I just explained to you how I'm juggling about five to yeah. six games. And now you're telling me I have to sink hundreds and hundreds of hours into a games as a service game because it doesn't end. It's just continuously. And so, you know, I'm, I'm on Hell Divers. I try to try to each day I try to dump in about three hours on Hell Divers. But then, you know, and then I'll go back to Final Fantasy. I, so it's part of my rotation. Now imagine if I was a Call of Duty guy or a 2K guy or a, a Madden guy or an Overwatch guy or some other kind of services type of game. Where would Hell Hell Divers Two fit into that? Now I have to share this three hours that I dedicate to Hell Divers a day. Now I have to share that with another three, four hours that I spend on COD or Madden or Two K, and then I still have to play the single player, or you know, story games or whatever. It's I, I see it. Most people who play Madden, they typically just play Madden. Most people that play COD, they typically just play COD or or uh, what used to be FIFA, but it's called Football Club now. It's hard to juggle a bunch of uh, live service games. It's just it's yeah. impossible. Yeah. So that that that's another thing, right? Um, and apparently, you know, so he's gonna come out with another one with Concord. Yep. And you know, and I'm thinking. Who's going to have time to really dedicate to play all these live service games? Because they don't yeah. end, right? Yeah. So you're going to jump yeah. from Helldivers to Concord, maybe a third party, you know. You still got Destiny gas. 2. You still, you still got, Destiny, you still got 2, Destiny 2, um, yeah. you know. And, you know, it's uh, it just gets, you know, it just gets ridiculous, you know. 
Yeah. Um, like, how do you manage all that? You know, that's why I said, like, why are you wishing for like 10 to 12 gas games? That's like, isn't the point of the gas game is to play that one particular game and be able to play it all the time, do everything and build up? It's, you know, it's not yeah. like a single. It's not like a single player game, where you um, you know, you jump. No, you know? exactly. Now, now, now. Here's the thing: if Hell Divers would have came out, and there would have been no other games, it would have been perfect. then Hell Divers Two would have been perfect. It's it's a main. I can sink all my time into it. It's fun. It keeps me coming back, and and I get to play with my friends. And there's always a dynamic atmosphere about what's going on. You never know what's going to happen. You never know how it's going to end. Will you make it to the ship? Will you? You know? Will you die? Will you know? Whatever. But it's just, I just find it weird that in the mix of all these other games coming out, you drop a live service game, and then you have another live service game. And it's, you don't, we don't, and we talked about this before, you only have so many hours in a day to dedicate to gaming. And out of that time, you have to split that between, you have to choose, you have to make a choice. Um, do I play this or do I play that? And and that's the problem I think most gamers um have to deal with right now. It's just, it's just really weird. Hell Divers would have been perfect if it was ready um last year when when Sony had that long lull before Spider Man. Yeah, that's literally yeah. that to me. Yeah. The opportunity to insert a gas game should be timing too, right? Yeah, no, absolutely, right? you're right. When, when you especially when you're the one setting up. When you're the publisher and you're setting up all the the time deals, you know mm-hmm. you're pushing for Ronin. You know you're pushing for yep. Final Fantasy. You know you're pushing for Cellar Blade. It's like, bro, you know all of this is happening. Like, this is yeah. you. Now, now, I'm not complaining, yep. not, you know, about having a lot of games to play. But like you said, there's only so much you can do in a given time period. So something's got to get cut. Like, for me, I'm going to be yep. personal. I'm going I'm to be real. I haven't played Hell Divers in a minute. I'm at level seven mm-hmm. and I stopped there. Because I moved on to yep. the other games, it's just it's just how yep. it is, and I don't like constantly jumping jumping back and forth, back and forth. I like to stick to a game, especially if I'm enjoying it, stay with it, beat it, and then go on to the next game. I don't like to play a game partially and then move away to start another game that I'm partially gonna start. I just I just yeah. don't roll that way. That's yeah. So it's really interesting, but anyway. Um, yeah. Let's let's get on to the topics. Um, hopefully, I think I saw Extreme and Manuel up in here, but I don't know if he's gonna. Yeah, yeah, I, I think yeah, they don't, they don't come from with the flood in. Oh, it's, you know him. He has to make his grand entrance. You know. Oh shit! Here you go. You go level okay, seven. Okay. They're, they're saying all right. Let me go to the chat. He says, Jay Hart says, <clears throat> Xbox Steam Machine is fire. Oh shit. Oh shit! <laughs> you know these are these guys are these these guys are ready to pray oh, to man. these guys are ready to pray for a new god. They they want to oh, go to man. Gabe now, the Church of yeah. Gabe. You know, Phil 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 Dominus Maximus felled them. So now it's the Church <laughs> of Gabe. You know, Gabe will save them. Gabe Gabe you know Gabe's 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 uh Moses. He's gonna he's gonna yeah. bring them to the Promised Land. Exactly. Uh, shout out to True SSJ. He says, "What's good, P Rock? I'm still going for platinums, as you should, my brother, as you should." Mm-hmm. And of course, Liquid Data. He says, what's good, gentlemen? Good evening from B more, Baltimore. What's going on, my, my brother. brother, man? There What's you know, good. you know, beast from the east, you know. So we're gonna kick it off. And then you know, and we're gonna kick off the topic, right? And I'm gonna put it in the hands of J Dub, and I'm gonna let him cook. So, J Dub, <laughs> Xbox yes, handheld. Xbox mm-hmm. handheld. What do you think mm-hmm. about this? What's 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 your opinion on this? On this Xbox uh, handheld. I'm gonna be honest. It's it's a pipe dream. And the reason I say it's a pipe dream, Port of Rock, we're we're 10 years into this thing, right? We're 10 years into this the the great console war of of last year and this year. And it just it doesn't look like Microsoft has learned their lesson if they actually um have a desire to make a handheld. Um, I'm going to give you two points of view. One point of view is they haven't learned their lesson. The lesson is they are fighting a a software. They're trying to remedy a software problem with more hardware, right? Last generation, Microsoft had three, four consoles to come out. 
right? Still had no games. This generation, they launched day one with two next generation consoles. Still had no games. Here we are four years into this generation, four months and four years into this generation, and they have yet to release a game this year. They're tr- if they come out with more hardware, they are still they're still ignoring the elephant in the room. Yes, they went out and spent $100 billion on publishers, on, on development teams, and all of this shit. But where are the games? You pull all of these studios. They have over 57 uh, from some something I heard on Twitter, 57 studios. Mm-hmm. But yet, why do they have an issue with l- putting games out consistently? But not just putting games out, but putting games out consistently. Last year, they talked about how these are the games you're going to be playing in the next 12 months. And out of those, out of those games, the only thing that launched was Redfall, um, Starfield, and then I, I think that's it, right? And then they said, well, we're sorry. We, we'll get away from that. We're not going to do that format anymore. And then they go and show us all of these games that are coming. And here we are in April, and we're, we've yet to receive one single game. So that's a problem. If they come out with more hardware, that's, that's them telling us, we're just going to give you more game. I mean, more consoles. We're just going to give you more hardware, and then hopefully, eventually, the games will come. We have did this waiting, wait for E3 all last generation. We've waited for E3 so long, Portal Rock, to E3 doesn't exist anymore, right? <laughs> So that that's one angle. That's one angle. That means they haven't learned their lesson. They haven't learned their lesson, <laughs> and they're just going to keep throwing out hardware. Now, number two, this could be the option here. Number two, it could be a situation where, like Nintendo, where Sony ran Nintendo basically out of the console space, the the, the home console space into the handheld space, and so maybe they say, "Listen, we we've tried for twenty four years to." To, to hang in there with PlayStation. They're just too strong of a brand. They're just too good at what they do. Their relationships are just too strong. Their development teams are just too strong. We just can't compete. How about we try to go and tackle the handheld market where it seems like because of the Steam Deck, because of the ROG Ally, because of the, uh, I think it's uh, MSI Claw, whatever, some, some of the other handhelds or whatever, um, we may have success with that. Um, Lenovo, maybe does Lenovo can, have one? Yeah, Le, Le, Legion. Lenovo. Um, Legion, I think. Yeah, Legion? Le, the Legion. Yeah, the Legion Go. The Legion yeah. Go. Yeah. So it could be a situation like that. They were like, "Listen, the console is not not selling. We're gonna let's take the Series S, shrink that shit down, throw it in the handheld space, throw Game Pass on it, throw Steam, throw Epic Games, just whatever. We, we just we would rather just take that route and then make our money." Right, take our games, put them on PlayStation, Nintendo, and just and just try to tackle the market from from a third party perspective. Where we'll sit side by side with Steam Deck, we'll sit side by side with the uh, the Legion Go, we'll sit side by side with the MSI Claw and and some of the other stuff and the, and the Rock Ally, and, and we'll just we think we may be we may have some set success in that area because clearly this world's most powerful console is not working and the world's weakest console isn't working. So let's get out of the console space. Those are the two options that I think Microsoft could be looking at if they are truly serious about a handheld. Now, this this rumor could also just be a pipe dream from somebody that feels like, well, I want I want an Xbox handheld. Right, but even if you have an Xbox handheld, you still have the same exact problem. You're not fixing a problem, right? Microsoft don't have a problem with having hardware to play their games on. They have a problem with actual games that people want to buy and delivering these high quality games. That's the problem that Microsoft has. So mm-hmm. though the, that that's 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 my thought on that. Um, I'd like to know which <laughs> one is it. Uh, I honestly think they're getting out of the hardware space. I don't think they're running to it. Um, but hey, you know, you never know. But th- that's right. my opinion. On it. Extreme, my brother from down under. Yo, yo, yo! How you guys how doing? You? I'm doing good. What's doing good. What's good? good. Doing, hey, doing good. Good to see you guys. Soon. Yeah. <laughs> hey. So about this Xbox handle, what what do you think about this? About okay. Xbox uh, attempting to get into the handheld business, if true. Listen, it makes so much sense 
that I know Microsoft is not going to do it. Like it's just it's too intelligent, um, and it makes too much sense. Because let me tell you this: all of these handhelds that J Dub listed before, all of them run on Windows, right? Xbox already has um, the Xbox you know ecosystem already there. The origin of what gaming is about. They are the best positioned to create a handheld besides Sony and Nintendo, right? Except because they have all of this cross compatibility, because they own Windows, they have that market field advantage that the other two don't have. But you know what I used to say about it? I used to say that about um, virtual assistants, right? Because I used to, this is way back when they still have mobile phones, I was like, they should come up with a version of Siri because they have desktop users. And if you could create an AI that you can say, instead of saying, you know, what's the weather or whatever, you can ask it to open that document that you were working, working on at 8 p.m. Thursday night, two weeks ago. And it's just going to look through your document, look through your history, and it doesn't need the name, it doesn't need the title, it just allows you to just immediately ping it and bring it up. I was like, they will have a huge advantage because nobody else had access to our documents the way that they did. You know, obviously Apple had the same thing with their ecosystem, but far smaller user base. So I was like, yeah, this makes a lot of sense. And then they came out with Cortana and obviously that was a disaster. So I feel the same way with this. It's almost like it's it's true. It, it, it lines up so well with the core competencies that I don't trust them to do it well. And uh, I disagree with JDub. I think they should give it a go. At the end of the day, I think that it would be so um it, it would be such a refresher, not just for their side, but to the gaming community as a whole. Because I, I mean you guys saw my videos, right? Yeah, you guys watch my videos, right, yes, Chad? You do, absolutely. you do. And if you did, and if you did, you will know that I got a PlayStation portal. And I still think it's a dumb product. It's a dumb <laughs> product that happens to <laughs> you know. It's a dumb product that happens to line up very well with me. But I can understand how 95% of the audience is like, no, this is silly. Like, I can recognize that something is dumb, even as I like it. You know, it's a bit like those, those people that watch, like, Married at First Sight, mm -hmm. and they know they're watching trash TV. But they're like, yeah, I enjoy it still. Like, I know it's a waste <laughs> of time, <laughs> but I enjoy it still. The, the portal is the opposite. I think it's actually, in terms of gaming, you will not believe how many more hours of gaming you would do because of a portal. But, you know... It's, it's, like, number, yeah, it's, the, it's the number one area. Um, exactly. I'm, like that, yeah. the thing is, Jada, I fully get it, right? But I also get the other person who looks at it and it's like, yeah, that's dumb. You know, because when I look at it, I'm just like, you could have been smarter though, <laughs> you know? And if Xbox could deliver a PlayStation, uh, sorry, an Xbox portal, but just give Xbox 360 compatibility, not even Xbox One or Xbox Series X native compatibility, just xbox original and then xbox 360 compatibility in the games that will still allow you to play san andreas you know like there are lots of people who love playing these 15 year old plus games and if you could play them natively on the handheld that is much like the playstation portal that will make it immediately a better product like i don't care about you know the software access you know being able to play spider-man versus gears of war or whatever but when you just look at the hardware perspective, it would just be such an intelligent product that I don't trust Microsoft to make it. Unfortunately, oh, the, like I just, the, I just don't trust Phil Spencer with it. The rumor, though, is um, the rumor is that it's going to be a next generation handheld to play next generation oh. games, encouraging oh, not, why? not 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 your old three sixty stuff. I mean, obviously the functionality be there, but I just. Uh, you know, I don't know. You know, who knows? Maybe, right? Maybe it could be kind of like the portal, or a streaming companion, right? Yeah, I, I that's what I mean. I'll, like, I'll, I'll be honest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I, I'll be honest. I think that would make more sense. But for them to have a dedicated, because see, here's the thing: when it comes to dedicated, you got to talk about cost, right? Mm -hmm. All the chips and everything on the inside. Well, that cost you're going to push five, six, seven hundred dollars, eight hundred dollars. Clearly, now you're competing against the Steam Deck, the Rogue Ally, and those, those. Let's face it, those items will run circles around whatever Xbox is going to come out with. Um, it's, just, it's just it is what it is. Um, but again, at the end of the day, 
with Xbox, they still have a, a game issue, right? If you buy this just to play the games, like right now, if you don't boot up your Xbox because they really don't have any games that entice you, why would you buy that handheld? If you buy it, do you think you can, all of a sudden you're going to have games that compel you to, to, to play? You know, No, you're not. You're going to have the same issue. So at least with PlayStation's thinking on their portal is, well, the games that you play now, right? The games that you mm-hmm. actually boot up, and then you we actually you actually sell twenty million copies of these of Spider Man and God of War and and all the new games that are out now, right? The Hell Divers and stuff. I play Hell Divers, you know, laying in the bed all the time, late at night. Um, yeah, because and, of the and, portal, and I, right? Because of the portal, right? Exactly. Um, exactly. That allows me to put in more hours when my wife, you know, comes in. Hey, you know, come, come get in the bed. Blah blah blah. So then, you know, hey, once she sleep, hey, I, I got the portal. I'm back to gaming. And so that's, you know, it's, it, I, I guess there's a need everywhere. I, my first mind tells me with the Xbox fan base frame of mind is, well, if we have a handheld. This will be something else that we can compete against PlayStation in, and this will help us get back in the mm. console. Yeah, the yeah, console yeah. was over at this point. I, I'm a, I'm here right, all right, live and direct on 60 frames, no lag podcast. The guys, the console war is over. It's so far over. Like it's literally over. When I say it's over, I mean it's over. Over. There is nothing the Xbox can do to come back from this. It's just it's done. We got your games. Matter of fact, your games are selling extremely well on our platform, right? And they're just going to be, be bringing more and more games. So I'll be playing Sea of Thieves on my PlayStation portal, right? Getting the Platinum Trophy and spending hours and hours. And I'll be doing the same thing with Hellblade, Starfield, and the rest of them games that's coming. It's so it's a wrap. Um, now, here's the thing. Do they go and compete with Nintendo, right, or for the handheld space? Mm, I, I, I'll tell you this. They they'll have a better chance competing with Nintendo than they do compete ever had competing with Sony. I mean, I disagree. <laughs> I'm sorry, but I'm just like, well, they, they, had had they had listen. They had they have a 24 year history getting Molly Watt by Sony. They don't no, have a 24 year history getting <laughs> getting Molly Watt by Nintendo. So I, I, I mean, you know, I still Yo, think they're gonna lose. But, the, yeah. the, the the thing for me is that. Nintendo fans are so entrenched. They are like Steam fans. You know, it's like no matter what you do, they will not go to your storefront. You know, yeah. That that's yeah. that's the thing for me because the thing is, Microsoft tried to compete against Steam as well, right? And they they lost that miserably, but they gave up fairly quickly as they should yeah. have. Um, but going back to the handheld for for a second, I think that you know, here here's my portal, everybody. You know, here it is it, this beautiful thing that I love very much because it gets me to game more. Uh, I just think that you make a slightly, slightly, not, you don't try to reinvent the wheel. Like, you know how you could start from where the Switch is? And then, you, like you say, you make a next generation hybrid console and everything. I think that's a mistake for Microsoft. I think start from where the PlayStation portal is and then say, what can we do to make this a little bit better? Even if you don't have the native capability that I was talking about, but you just give it yeah. access to Xbox Game Pass Cloud, right? day just like day one instead of having to wait for a software update or whatever we'll get on the portal you know just just that will be another thing where you're like okay here's a playstation portal plus one then if you think to yourself okay what can we support natively on it and even if it's mobile games you know like if it's just access to the android or like a custom third-party android storefront that would be another thing where it's like okay that's plus one again i think that having native games is going to convince a lot. It's going to make a lot of sense to a lot of people because if you saw my video of how I got the portal, I bought it secondhand, right? So I pulled up to the guy uh, who is supposed to sell me the portal, and as I'm walking there, another guy pulls through the driveway. I see him and I'm like, "Oh, that must be the vendor." So I'm like, "Hey, I'm here to buy the portal," and he's like, "Me too." And then we realized that the guy who was selling had said yes to both of us, which obviously isn't a cool thing to do. And then after we kind of get everything sorted out, I'm like, you know what? You can have it. That's fine. So I'm just walking back to my car. He comes back. Okay. The guy who was supposed to buy the portal. Yeah. He comes back and he yells for me. He's like, come back. And then as I'm walking back, I'm like, yo, what up? I'll let you have it. And then he says, I didn't know that you needed a PlayStation for this. And then I'm like, yeah, it's a accessory device. And he's like, well, it doesn't actually like have access to like Android or iOS storefront. 
like not even the mobile games. And I'm like, yeah, no, nah, it doesn't do anything without the PlayStation. So you see that for a person that wasn't keeping up with us, mm -hmm. when you saw a PlayStation branded accessory, they yeah. instinctively thought it had some native capability. Like even mm -hmm. when he let go of the fact that it couldn't play PlayStation 5 games, he was like, yeah. but what about PlayStation 4 games? Then when I said no to that, he was like, but what about Android, you know, or yeah. iOS? Like you see, like people see a tablet of some kind that like it should run something by itself. So I think that if Xbox came and mm. did anything like that, it would just be able to like just instantly sink into people and be like, oh, okay, I get it now. It's like this is a thing that can play like little mobile games, itty bitty mobile games. But if I connect it to my big boy console, now it becomes my streaming device. But 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 let me ask you this, right? And, and I, I totally understand what you're saying. Myself, right? Mm -hmm. If 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 you do, right? I I think the advantage that PlayStation has is when you building this device, and its only job is to communicate with the PlayStation Five. Mm -hmm. Any of that other Android stuff in any of the other platforms that you have is going to degrade the quality and experience that you will have on it. Because I'll be honest, mm -hmm. why even buy a portal if you're going to play Candy Crush on it and swipe up and down on the screen, right? Mm -hmm. That's something you already have on your Android phone or you already have on your uh, your Apple phone. Why would you spend mm -hmm. $200 to do that? The, the goal mm -hmm. of this device, right, is to have the chipset in there that communicates directly with the light bridge, light speed, whatever they call it, stuff with the with the earbuds and directly with the PS5. And that's his sole purpose. His mm -hmm. sole purpose is to make sure that your focus is on the PlayStation 5, not somebody else's store, not somebody else's shindig. Because what's gonna happen is you're gonna download some shitty Android app and it's gonna be mm -hmm. shitty, and you're gonna complain that the portal yeah. is shitty. Because of this yeah. goddamn shit. Yeah. This is the number mm -hmm. one reason why Apple creates its store. This is why it doesn't allow open platforms and other things on there. Because people never remember that um, they, they don't remember that shitty app that they downloaded. They just remember that your phone is shitty. They blame the phone. They blame the device mm -hmm. for a, a bad app. Right? Yeah. For example, you play an Xbox game, you boot up your Xbox, you download some games, some Game Pass, right? And you was like, it's a shitty game. Oh, man, that fucking Xbox is shitty. It's trash, whatever. Well, guess what? Yeah. It was just one game, but most people, right, aren't hardcore gamers. They're just the guys who booted up and they tried and then they all of a sudden right off the console, right off the hardware, right off of whatever, right? If you try a Tesla car and you download an app on it and it's a third-party app, and if the app is bad, then you'll say, yeah, I tried a Tesla before. The UI yeah. is just sucks. It should, you know, people, I, they're not, yeah, they're not smart. But there's a lot mm. of people that aren't smart. Yeah. And so I think that's why Sony and Apple and people that mm -hmm. think like them and act like them, this is why they curate that experience. They want to make sure that no matter what app you download, no matter what you're doing, it's always curated it's always managed and made sure that it it functions and it runs well and it it's a great experience android is that open platform where it'll run on any device um you can have a good app you can have a shitty app you can have spyware you can have malware you can have you know virus all kind of shit it just allows for that it's for the tinkerers but most people yeah. aren't savvy enough to know how to stop any of the bad stuff from happening that's why most people don't give their grandmothers and their grandparents and their little kids Android phones um, because oh, yeah. you can get a lot of the world, said, right? Yeah, right. as an Android user, I've always said that if I have a partner, I want them to be on Apple because I don't want to fix yeah. your phone too. Like, Absolutely. <laughs> at one hundred percent, I don't. I don't want to be. I don't want to be fixing your phone too because my phone yeah. is already hard enough to keep like uh, payment proper. I've always yeah. said that. Like, if I'm on Windows, I want you to be on Mac. You know, like Absolutely. I've never wanted a partner that is using the Windows Android ecosystem. And yep. listen, as a person who appreciates a device that just does one thing, I agree yep. with you, J Dub, fully. Um, it's the same reason that I first thought of, that when I was talking about PlayStation VR and why Sony isn't bringing it to PC, because I was like, well, even if Sony brings it to PC, you're going to download an app that may not have been optimized for VR too. 
And now you're going to blame the PlayStation VR 2 for the poor optimization, right? Because you're Absolutely. right. And, and it's not even about people being smart. It's that they shouldn't have to be. When there is a product that is compatible with something, it is the yeah. onus of the company to make sure that that product gives them a good experience, gives the customer a good experience on what is officially supported. If you go and you silo something, okay, that's on you. But if you're going to go through the official store and the official means, and we put it on our box that it can do this, then it should provide you a good experience. So no, you're absolutely right and I agree with you. When it comes to the whole, um, would they let siloed Android or a version of Android onto the Xbox handheld or whatever, or should Sony have done it? Um, of course, you couldn't just open all of Android. You have to curate the apps, yeah. you have to talk to the developers, you have to do this, you have to do that. Um, I'm just saying, I'm not saying that it would be a good idea for the company because I agree with you. Not even in the terms that the hardware is specifically just for the PS5, but just that the company would have to put in this extra amount of work and development, right? And that money has to come from somewhere. Like Sony isn't going to go and curate you, let's say 1,000 games for the portal that come from the Android world. And then how are they going to monetize for that? You know, like, are they going to sell exactly. those games through their version of Android store? No, they will have to support the Google Play Store, which means that, you know, you could just go and buy those games without them ever seeing any money. And now they've exactly. made it so that you can play it on it. Yeah, so obviously that will have to come into it. So it, either that makes the console more expensive in the first place, or they mm -hmm. have to then start charging you for a feature of some kind. I agree yeah. with you. I am, no, I, I, I was, yeah, I've always uh, been a kind of one device, one use kind of person. I prefer that. But I'm saying to the general public, they expect they have certain expectation when they see this type of product and as soon as they see tablet their mind goes okay android ios there's some kind of compatibility there or at least there's some kind of native gaming yeah. happening there from the vendor so if they accept yeah. that android and have... ios are going to be there they're going to say yeah. oh i can access my playstation store games yeah now i have right i have the logitech g cloud i have the uh Asus ROG Ally, as well as the Steam Deck. Um, I don't have the Legion. Um, I, I was going to buy it. I, I went ahead and canceled the order. Uh, and this new claw with the Intel i7 and i5 and stuff like the that. The MSI and, claw, yeah. The MSI claw, yeah. And I was going to do that, and, and I ended up canceling it. And I, and I thought about it. I said, you know, no matter which one of these devices, the only one is the eyeball is the Logitech G Cloud. Because it does have uh, an uh, Xbox Game Pass app. Mm -hmm. um, it has that you can use that as an Android tablet device and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I realized I went to the Google store. I downloaded Asphalt, whatever, 9, 10, whatever mm -hmm. number they're at now, right? And I started playing it, and I noticed it, it was some hiccups in it. So that means that the chip inside of it isn't powerful enough to run the latest ver to push the latest version of that Asphalt that's generally one of the better looking Android yeah. games that's on the store. Yeah. And then I realized, well, this device is made to stream. It wasn't mm -hmm. it wasn't given all the power to play native, right? And so, but mind you, I spent three hundred dollars for this device. Mm -hmm. And so when I look at the issues that I had with that device, it, it it works flawlessly. I didn't have any issues with it. But playing it as a native device is eventually some of the more yeah. native Android games are going to require more power and more memory and things like that, which jacks up the price even more. Or another thing, look at the, the Vita and things like that. Mm -hmm. When those handhelds drop, the chips that's in them are already outdated by the time they come to market. Mm -hmm. They change the, you know, cell phone chips and shit changes every six months. So by the time you get the latest, whatever, Android, it's, it's already outdated by the next samsung chips or whatever chips the arm chips that they have that's out there so you're you're fighting a losing battle you'll never have the best and the latest and greatest because they keep changing so much but with the whole streaming solution now mind you streaming has gotten a lot better than it used to be right uh, my my portal worked flawlessly in my house when i'm traveling mm -hmm. and stuff it works fine it does what, what it's advertised to do i have no issues so i think we're there I just think that if Microsoft decide to go that route, I think they'll have big success and that'll help keep the cost down. Mind you, yeah. I only paid, right? The 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 cost of a dual sense edge controller for my portal. Mm -hmm. It comes yeah. with a screen, the haptic feedback. I mean, it's basically a dual sense controller with a very nice LCD screen on it. Beautiful and the screen. Feedback and all of this stuff. 
it, so I don't feel like I'm gypped because yeah. I have like three dual sense edges sitting around the house, right? At, at any Tell given time. One. So for me buying the PlayStation Portal, it, it felt like it was the right price. It does the right thing. And it's like, it's a companion. If Microsoft yeah. does that and make it a companion to the Xbox series or whatever, um, I think that'll be a great thing, right? It'll give you just another place to play, but their overall problem, I think, is a, is a whole different ball game, right? It's not about... Microsoft <laughs> gives you a million ways to play your Xbox games, right? Mm -hmm. um, and, I, and that's part of one of their problems. They They basically tell you, hey, go play everywhere else but our console. Whereas Sony is like, you can play whatever you want, but you got to have a PS5 to play it. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? It just is. It is what it is. So uh, two different strategies. We don't. I don't know where Microsoft is going. Um, it looks like they get out of hardware business, but then all of a sudden this hardware start talking about um, Sarah Bun with the whole the the most te technologically advanced whatever whatever that means yeah. you know that could be yeah. the cloud right that Take could be cloud. Okay, okay, so, yeah 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 it, you know all of that and, and there also could be another world's most powerful console we we don't know but i think it's so cliche now for them to say the most powerful maybe they mm -hmm. just changed the moniker over to the most technically advanced right so I mean, mm -hmm. we're, we're done we're we're done when it comes to them and what they're going to promise um but um I can see having a Siri, uh, Xbox series, streaming, whatever. Um, but yeah. I'll be honest, it, it still ends up a hard sell for me because it's like, okay, I have this device that streams my Xbox games, but I don't even play the Xbox games that I have now because they're exactly, just not yeah. a product that I'm used to. So, so I'm, yeah. I'm still, you know, I don't know how, Look, how do you me, how do you sell more hardware when you can't bring, sell the hardware you have? Up. Let me bring this up, right? The reason why Xbox had trouble selling hardware in a console market because you had a huge competitor that mimicked, or maybe not mimicked, but were the same family, you could say, which is PlayStation, right? Nintendo mm -hmm. went and did their own thing. So they're very unique. So obviously, Nintendo does something that Xbox and PlayStation completely don't really do. But in the realm yeah. of what PlayStation and Xbox do, they're very similar. Majority of the games are on the same platform, right? So you're talking about the small percentage of games that are that while they're small in percentage they're very impactful because they're really noticeable you know like the halos versus god of war the gears of war versus the uncharted you understand so while the first party is not that many they were they they show like a representation of the brand right and thus helps create a strength of the brand so playstation is a strong brand in console gaming they sell insane amount of units per year you understand what I'm saying? That, you know, number one on MPD, number one on chart track, you know, all that stuff, right? So yeah. now we're talking about handhelds, right? Now the Switch technically is a beast in handhelds, but it's a unique, you know, has this unique environment. It does its own thing. If you want AAA gaming in the handheld market, in a general sense, right? Like with the multipress and all that stuff, now everybody looks at Steam, right? Lenovo and all that stuff. But here's the thing, and I'm just going to make, I'm going to read you this. Steam released in February 2022. And it says right here, research from Omedia reported that Steam Deck sold 1.62 million units in 2022. Their reported estimate that the Steam Deck would pass 3 million units sold in its launch during sometime 2023. So when you look at the numbers, Steam don't sell a lot. It's not a beast of handheld, right? Mm -hmm. It technically is not the dominant handheld. And when you think about it, what is the dominant handheld in terms of sales? Like, what is the shit that's flying off the roof, right? I think Xbox has an opportunity of an established brand to take over a market that technically doesn't have a king. Nintendo, on their side, they're technically a whole kingdom to themselves. So nobody really messes with them. In console, PlayStation is the de facto king. But who's the de facto king in this AAA handheld market? And I don't think one is technically established. If you're talking two years out in the market and you only sold three million, you're no king. Steam is no king. It might be the most yeah. notable name because it's really the only thing out there. Aces Rogue, mm -hmm. Lenovo. I mean, look yeah. at the competitors. Steam, Lenovo, yeah. Aces Rogue. I'm yeah. I my opinion, none of those have the branding of Xbox. Xbox outbrands uh, them. All of them. You're right. 
So who's well, to say that technically, while we all saying, oh, but we have Steam, whatever, sure. But none of those hands, are, from what I'm reading, they're not the king. None of them is a king. There is no king in handhelds. Right? No, Nintendo, you're right. Outside of you're Nintendo. Right. Nintendo will be right, but they have their own thing. So unless you like, you know, Nintendo third first party, I mean first party, if you're not interested in Nintendo games and you're looking for AAA handheld to play the Blockbuster exclusive, I mean you know, the Blockbuster yeah. titles and all that stuff, mm-hmm. there is no king in handheld. They're all yeah. they're just there until somebody comes in and be like, you know what? I'm the captain now. I'm the yeah. definitive king of handhelds. You guys didn't cut it. And I think Xbox might have the opportunity to you may you failed in a console market, but that doesn't necessarily mean you'll fill in a handheld market because you are now competing with a whole different group of competitors. And for my looking at it, Steam is not the PlayStation of handhelds. Lenovo is not the PlayStation handhelds. Asus Rogue, like none of them are the king. None of them are like the top sellers. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And what Extreme says says they also have an advantage. Because they're literally using their own operating system, right? So if anyone has the opportunity to give you the best Windows handheld experience, the best Game Pass handheld experience, it's them, right? So it's not just, it's like like what you guys said, right? How many times have you heard, um, J-Dub, that you can stream PlayStation games off a Steam Deck? Yep. But which is the one that's giving you the best playstation streaming experience your portal portal absolutely. you understand what i'm saying absolutely. and i think that's what yeah. stream i mean extreme if, if uh, i apologize if i'm not but i think he's alluding to that but the main thing is we're all talking about oh in the world of steam and lonovo that none of them are kings i'm looking at the data they're not selling for shit yeah. now granted handhold mark is different maybe it's not big we won't really know <laughs> but as of right now you you sold three million two years that's not a lot you really didn't gobble up anything this is to me yeah. this is still uh open territory yeah. for anybody to come in and just dominate Absolutely. you know Absolutely. and i think and i think the xbox price. branding you know as mm-hmm. a platform provider is in a better position to get people who probably don't care about steam they you know they're looking to handhelds but yeah. i think more people might be interested in a handheld named xbox than a handheld named steam because right now, Steam's not impressing me with its sales. Three million since February 2022? Like, if let me put it this way. If we replace Steam with PlayStation deck, it would be considered a failure. Three, three million in two years? Everybody would be ragging no. on PlayStation deck right now. Absolutely. 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 You, you, like, 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 no way would people give props to PlayStation deck. Three, uh, the, yeah. the PlayStation deck launched in February 2022, and right now it's around three million? Hell no. It would get your bill right. of, if the portal it isn't a three million get, already. What? It's what already happened? a failure. What? If the portal isn't a three million already, people yeah. would think it's already. Yeah, and a that's failure. the portal, oh, right? That's not even. Absolutely. You see what I'm saying? So the brand. They'll be like, it's been a week. Yeah. yeah. So I think Xbox handheld can do what they could mm-hmm. in a console, simply because who are your competitors? You got your probably that, the toughest competitor is the one that takes three two years to sell three million. That's not a competitor. Hell, I, no, I, you, in fact, I think Xbox could sell three million handhelds in one year. Yeah, I think I think I think the brand is strong enough to get to convince three million people to buy it in a year, easily. Now, I think Xbox I know, me, can easily sell three million easily. And as a let me ask this let me as ask a dedicated this handheld. Now let me ask you this. Microsoft is in the, the process of uh, obviously putting their games on Nintendo and PlayStation platforms. Would Microsoft spend the R and D money to make a handheld device? And if it's native, obviously the cost is going to compete with the Steam Deck and the ROG Ally and those other handhelds around the five, around the six, seven hundred dollar market, right? All of those cost like six ninety nine, seven ninety nine. If do you think they would have a success with that trying to get Portal Rock to spend seven hundred dollars on a Xbox device, or would they have a better chance of putting a Xbox app on a PlayStation portal? Saying, "Hey Sony, uh, you know we we know you can use your portal for your PS Five. Go ahead and open it up so people can use it 
on their Xbox. I, mean, I don't. I don't know. I'm just asking. Like, well, well yeah, well, but well, PlayStation won't well, allow I, any Xbox well, app. On I, their I know that, but I'm. Yeah. But I'm just. I'm just saying. Just this is all hypothetical, yeah. right? Like, what? Wh- which one would you? I mean, because they both seem kind of far fetched to me. That's well, what I'm, I'm not saying. a hand. Well, you, 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 I'm not yeah. a handheld guy, so I'm the worst one well, to talk. Most about. aren't. Yeah, but, but, but I'm gonna say obviously, this. But obviously, I, most people but aren't. If, but I'm gonna say this. Yeah. But I'm gonna say this, and I said this a hundred times. For Xbox mm-hmm. to win, they have to compete in an area PlayStation is not in. PlayStation Absolutely. is not in the dedicated handheld market. You're so right. who are they competing with? I'm not impressed with Steam. Uh, can, can Steam I is. Say this? In fact, I'm gonna say it. Steam is bitch made. Yeah. Fuck Steam. Oh shit. Three oh, million shit. two years. Convince me oh, otherwise. Shit. In my opinion, oh, who the fuck is Steam Deck? Who the oh, fuck shit. is you? PC as Master Race for the- I, I, Listen, as far as I'm gonna, as far as as far as I'm concerned, there ain't nobody in the handheld business. Yeah, three yeah. million in two years. Understand. I'm supposed to be impressed with that. Again, if it was called PlayStation Deck, we will all mm-hmm. say it flopped. Hell, VR hasn't been out two years and already is considered yeah. a flop. Yeah. And that thing is not native on its own. It's tethered to the PlayStation Five. Did people not say it flopped? Did it not fail? Yep. No, you're right. You're right. They were saying it. They I, I just, I just, I just, I just want to point out that the opinions of Porter work do not necessarily represent. The f- no, but no, 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 no. I'm not saying life. that it did flop. <laughs> what I'm saying she is, is I'm not she saying. I'm, I'm, what attack. I'm saying, if you consider VR failure, uh-huh. then how is Steam Deck a success when it's not yeah. even tethered to anything? Hey, so hey, the way Paul, I see know- it, who the fuck is Steam Deck? I don't know who. Yeah. Who even has a Steam Deck? Yeah. I don't fuck who it hardly sells. Yeah. That's the how I yeah. see it. Then we, we it's not selling two who has a Steam Deck? Not that two no, three you, million. You, you, in the whole right. world. You, you, in two years. You, 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 listen, hardly anyone has a Steam Deck. Let's stop lying now. Let's stop capping. No one bought that shit. Look, Let me put it this way. Vito sold eleven million and it flopped. Eleven million. Steam Deck on his best day can hope to reach Vito numbers. That's that is Vol's gold. Ooh, I hope we can reach Vita numbers one day. Are you fucking kidding me? Three fucking million? Are you on your goddamn mind? Who the fuck? We're talking about Steam Deck. Oh my god, compare Steam Deck. Who the fuck actually bought the shit? Like, let me like I'm looking, I'm trying to look at Steam Deck sales. They're all fucking like all the projections is low as fuck. No one bought this yeah. thing. So what the fuck are we talking about? Vita failed at eleven million. 11 million it failed. 11. You're telling me we're going to brag about three as a competitor? It ain't shit. Uh-huh. And that's Steam Deck. I, I can't even imagine. Let me look up Aces Rogue. How much did that sucker sell? It, is it even tracked? Does it even sell enough to track? Yeah, Aces Rogue nah, total sell. Nah. I, I, from what <laughs> I read online, all three of all, all of the handhelds combined um we're no more than four million so Are i mean that's kidding a, me? yeah, i mean that's that's the market that's that is Current you're right sales figures right. eight hundred and sixty thousand. Yeah. are you out of your f- yeah. yo, yo I community is this community out of this goddamn mind not even I a million eight hundred and sixty thousand. and my, yeah, no my shit no wonder microsoft is making an xbox handheld there's nobody out there doing it i would too how i'm about to make a porter rock handheld I, my shit would at least sell 500k i can at least get 500 people to buy my shit are you kidding me no wonder soldier boy was out here trying to make up shit like what ain't nobody bought this yeah. shit so like literally microsoft probably has confidence in the handheld market, because there's nobody there to fuck with them. Yeah. Who's gonna go toe to toe with Xbox in the handheld market? Nobody. There ain't nobody yeah. there. I mean, extreme. Am I wrong? Am I looking Yo, at hey, this hey, fucked up? Hey, <laughs> I just want to say, okay, before we go on, okay, <laughs> the opinions of Portal Rock Seventy Seven do not necessarily no. represent the official sense of Sixty <laughs> FNL. It's <laughs> panel, subsidiary, fuck that. This sponsors, is my members, branding. Friends, we we all agree. This is not a <laughs> this is a Totalian dictatorship. Okay. My word, you listen, are... my bullshit is the panel's bullshit. They you signed on to it. They didn't read. They didn't you read the fine print. They didn't and read my, the fine print. Yo, you they didn't. Me, 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 listen, Australia, Australia don't understand American business. He didn't see the fine print. My bullshit <laughs> is now his bullshit. So, <laughs> right. so, okay. so when they go on Twitter, well, Extreme thinks Steam Deck sucks. <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, we're all in this, baby. Oh. We're all in. No, but yeah. no, but but no. In all serious conversation, though, extreme. Am I far yeah. off? Like, or is that oh, handheld? Yeah, or is like a handheld such a niche market that three million sells, eight hundred sixty thousand sells is competitive? That is like listen, the hundred million listen. seller. PC players are bitch made anyway. I don't know why it is that we play me on Steam. We will just play me on PC players. Okay, let's face it. Let's face it. If it's not the little ticky biggy thing where they can put, you know how you make a, a PC handheld that they can get into? Give them little Lego blocks they can put in themselves so they feel smart for, oh, I upgraded to 32 gigs of RAM. Oh, I got a new module. Oh, I swapped out the graphics part. Like, honestly, if you give them something that's already pre made, so, they, they, so, just, they, they just can't handle it. So They're the handheld like, needs to be like, upgradable yeah. it needs to be like Just, a, yeah, a scientific yeah, kit you need to lego it even <laughs> if you make it all proprietary so that all of these parts are going to be completely useless after they are done with it because they're upgraded to the next one they just want to feel like they accomplished something like honestly they spend more time doing pc building than they do pc gaming and look <laughs> at that they, they put a 1490 to play fucking solitaire actually no solitaire would be a better game than oh, half of the God. things that these people are playing so the, the whole point about them like championing these handhelds and everything it's only to be relevant because everybody knows that pc gaming is irrelevant like the, there's a reason that there's a console war but there isn't a gpu war like they do it for the little buying of things but who, who actually cares like who actually cares like they care about frames that's not the closest to get your gaming they count frames in the top corner of msi afterburner because they all use the same fucking software like it's so <laughs> basic being a pc gamer like honestly it's literally go ahead and play lego blocks pretend that pc gaming is as hard to do as because back in the days like in the 2000s it used to be difficult to actually like optimize the compatibility between parts nowadays you just go and buy anything that fits in the slot and the drivers and everything, they're going to take care of it. But they still want to feel as smart as if it takes a PhD to put a PC together. That's when they get so mad when you put a PC together and you're not interested in PC gaming. Because they're like, oh, why are you exposing us? It's not that difficult, is it? You didn't even need to do it. Why do you have a 3070 when you're only a photographer? Like, this, is, this is exactly why. So listen, PC gamers are never going to be the ones to, uh, what is it? start off a brand new category so talking more seriously by the way uh since uh your shit is my shit then my shit is your shit now no, you no, there's one way this is in america, is... no, no, america, no 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 america, no 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 it goes no, both ways no no not in america it's one it way it goes both we, ways not, now you not, believe that pc I, gamers listen, are big our our this is what you listen, believe our our now it's not, sense. listen your our infrastructure is not well developed we go one way <laughs> in America, our infrastructure is poor. We spend too much it's on like, war. It's like so, when you were talking, the bridge hit the, 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 yeah, the ship hit the bridge. That's collapsed. it. The bridge is down. I'm sorry, the bridge collapsed. Sorry. It gonna, yeah, exactly. Not the bridge fell down. <laughs> My words toppled the whole bridge. That's it. It's exactly. Over. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> you, you can't poor infrastructure. Over. That's funny. <laughs> oh, no, no, but listen, PC gamers are never going to be the ones who spring start a new category of gaming, a new branch of gaming. They are not. They are absolutely not. They can't even, they can barely do with a new branch of games. Like, let's face it, like all of these games that they get started, they don't really hit the mainstream much of the game on consoles anyway, because that's where actual gamers are. So the point is this, there is a new arena for gaming. There's a new lane, right? And you're absolutely right. Microsoft, like you and I have been saying, has a unique advantage and they have a unique value proposition that they could bring forward, okay? But for me, it just reminds me too much of the Zune. Like, you know, like it's just like, it, it just feels like too many things are aligned for Microsoft to do this well. That, that's the thing that actually makes me believe less. Like if they had to work a little bit harder to come into the space, I would actually believe it more. But they don't. They already own window, Windows. They already own Xbox. They already know how to make hardware. They already have Surface. So they already know how to do portable hardware. And they, recently they merged their Surface and their Xbox team or the Windows team yeah. together. One of those things was merged. So the point is that it's already too many ducks are already in a row for Microsoft to actually do well. That now it makes me feel like, yeah, they're going to fuck this up somehow. At the end of the day, the most realistic version of this thing is that they do not come up with a physical handheld. They just come up with a different version of Windows that can run better on smaller screens. Or alternatively, they come up with a Xbox app that is more encompassing so that instead of going into the Windows environment, 
you basically, as soon as you get into Windows, you click on the app, it boots up and it takes over the screen and then you're working within that environment. So then it, they will support the Legion Go, they will support the MSI Claw, they will support all of these other Windows-based handhelds. Um, and then that will be the solution there. But I think they should come up with a hardware solution. And I do think that whilst, whilst it will be an interesting move for them to dish a traditional console and kind of go hybrid, go in between Xbox and sorry, go in between PlayStation and Switch, you know, be like, hey, listen, we are more powerful handheld than the Switch and we are a less powerful, you know, console overall than the PlayStation. I do think that the companion route is the best route to go. And I think that even then you can find a tremendous success because let's say you come up with next generation and let's say that this hard, this um, Xbox handheld is also part of the next generation. I still think, okay, offer Xbox One games natively available because the silicon for that will obviously not require as much power, as much juice, as much battery life drainage as if you offer current titles, you know, natively. Then give us the accessory device that is a companion to your big boy console. And since it will be the biggest technological advance we've ever seen in gaming, then people will have a reason to want to bring that in a portable form factor. You will have control of the entire software and hardware stack completely all the way integrated through. And you'll be able to work off of the Xbox kernel rather than a Windows kernel, I think. Now, I don't know if kernel was used in the right way there, but the point is that you will not be based on Windows, you'll be based on Xbox. So you come up with a new Xbox environment that can be for the handheld. And you will have Game Pass on it, you have um, Xbox Cloud on it. It just makes too much sense. I think where the portal first made no sense to me, and I had a revulsion to it, um, the Xbox handheld makes too much sense to me to, for it to not be done. Mm. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> shout out to Blue Jay. He says, hopping in late, but wanted to show support of Mano. Hey, appreciate Blue Jay. I'm glad you're here. I hope you continue to enjoy the show. Thank you so much for rocking out. And we got Braxton. He says, if Xbox can't beat PS and console, they're definitely not beating Nintendo and handhelds. Oh, they're most definitely not beating Nintendo and handhelds, but the advantage is Nintendo... While it's a handheld, it provides a unique experience, right? So if you're looking for like the AAA gaming stuff, right, that you get on PC and consoles, but in a handheld, to play on a handheld and stuff like that, you know, the Maddens, you know, Grand Theft Autos, Jedi Survivors, Dead Space, you know, all, all the games that Nintendo handheld doesn't get, right? And that's what you're looking for. I think Xbox has the opportunity through their branding and through their name to get people interested in handheld gaming simply because it's an Xbox handheld it, as compared to Steam Deck, I don't think the Steam Deck name is as strong as people make it out to be. Because looking at these sales, it's just not strong. It's just it's pretty. Yo, hard, es to be especially, especially in the markets where they don't have any presence, right? Like imagine yeah. what this could do in India or in China or in something else. And that's why I say that it needs to have some native capability because a lot yeah. of those markets, the internet infrastructure may not necessarily be there for people yes. to have them during the commute. So. <laughs> If you have some kind of like, imagine if you could play San Andreas on your morning commute and you had like the full comfort and everything else that the PlayStation Portal can offer you. I just think that people will be like, yeah, there is a place for this device in my life. And it will be something that can be separate from like a person could just buy the Xbox handheld by itself and be content with retro gaming, right? They love backwards compatibility anyway, you know? Or they could then buy a console later, and now it can function as a companion. Or they could just buy the Xbox handheld, and it could just go straight off the cloud. So whenever you are wanting to play the current-gen games, you can just stream them from the cloud. And then that's always been the duration they've been going in anyway. So it just makes too much sense to me. Yeah, I just, I just don't think Steam really captured the handheld market. Yeah, I don't think that Steam did. I, don't I didn't even did. think that it opened it up. No, I, don't I don't even think, think it opened yeah, it up. I think it's a niche I, market. I think Xbox has the opportunity to truly open up the market. Do you, know, do you remember what the... Like, Valve had the VR headset that made a big wave when it first yeah. came out because it was so expensive and so advanced. <laughs> what was that thing called again? Like... The Valve Irrelevant VR, whatever. Oh, shit. Like, <laughs> <laughs> oh. No, but but no, in all in all seriousness, when it came out, people made such a big deal about it. Oh yeah, but Valve it didn't VR. do that well. Called, yeah, what was what was the index? The index. Was it the yeah. index? I think it was called the index. 
Okay. It's a terrible well, name, right? Terrible name. I, I mean, it, it makes it sound like you're doing spreadsheets. But the point is, yeah, yeah the Valve but Index. You when know, it first announced, it was like the big yeah, deal. It was when a big deal. Do nothing. And, and then, same, and exactly. Then same came with out. the Steam Deck. When it's first announced, it makes such a big deal. Again, because PC gamers think they matter, but they yeah. don't. Like, you, this is not the yeah. way you create a new like section of gaming. Yeah. But the point is this. Now that um, this handheld market space is open to gamers and gamers are like oh i no longer necessarily have to choose between my console gaming and gaming on the go because that's the thing that it never actually we've never actually been in this moment before right like as a gaming culture we've never been in a place where your serious games could go portably with you one way or the other right like yes we've had remote play for a while so i guess on playstation we've always had the capability but it's never been as native, it's never been as comfortable, it's never been as serious as this. And yeah. Xbox will come in and capitalize on that because it is really the first time that a person could play GTA 6 somehow, some way, on a portable device that feels like a good experience without feeling like you're making a lot of compromises and sacrifices in terms of like using your phone or whatever. Yeah. Hey guys, everybody's I got some asking, breaking... Wait, everybody's breaking... asking in the chat, because they'd be like, all right, yeah, the, the the handheld from Xbox is great, but what games? Everybody's asking that. It's all the games, right? Remember, yeah. if you're in a market with no competitor, then the whole first party, you don't have to be as strong from a first party wise because most of the third party is not on Nintendo. So Microsoft gets the automatic win because you're not going to be playing Grand Theft Auto, Madden, Jedi Survivor, all these third party games that are out there they're just not on nintendo switch so xbox gets the l right now of course you can say well these games are on steam and aces true but steam and aces aren't selling no one's buying those products so really who's left and i think that's why i think xbox has the opportunity to dominate because no one really gives a shit about the steam deck and nintendo doesn't get most of these games right but with a xbox handheld with a brand name and a recognizable name you might get more people to jump on handheld gaming and be like, yo, I'm cool with getting Xbox. I like Xbox. Yeah, I'll get it with Xbox. Yeah. Because what's the alternative? Nintendo Switch, which doesn't have these games, or the Steam Deck, which no one really gives a fuck about in the first place. And I think that's mm -hmm. I think that's the kicker. Microsoft is entering a market that really doesn't have a top tier competitor. Like like the console. But I mean the portal is the closest competitor, but it is such a niche. Yes, um, and it's locked. It's locked. Entrance into the experience that yeah, it, it will be like again. That's what I'm saying. Like all they have to really do is a PlayStation Portal plus one, and that will make so much more sense to people. All right, what's the breaking news? Yeah. Uh oh, yeah. Um, unfortunately, there was a seven point five magnitude earthquake oh, in uh, in, in yeah in Taiwan, and so there's a uh bunch of damage and stuff done there and for a lot of people that don't know taiwan makes what 92 percent of all electronics including uh our our you know consoles or um the pc tv all the all the electronics and stuff so uh hopefully those people are okay and uh and everything is okay there but could something like this you guys think something like this could uh delay the ps5 pro and the Man, uh, switch you man. God damn, J Dub. Oh, you got shit. No, my bad, brother. I know. I know my integrity oh, is low, but I know that. He said, he send them thoughts and prayers. He send them thoughts and prayers. Yo, he send them thoughts and prayers. He send them thoughts and prayers. Oh, man. And then the thing, you know, what's the crazy part. You know, here's the crazy part because I was stationed in Japan in Okinawa. So when a little uh -huh. island has a major earthquake, guess what comes right after? The tsunami. That's what's yes. going on. Yes. Yeah. So the, the yeah. worst is not even over, dog. And you are like, is this going to delay man. my pro? Oh, man. Oh, man. man. Stole them oh, My man gets no fucks. Taiwan, hey, you better hey. figure it out. <laughs> hey, hopefully oh, them PS5 man. pros sitting in some warehouse oh, over here. Oh, shit. That oh, shit, man. man. Better keep that shit you dry. Say, I hope the poor is safe. <laughs> 
Oh, he said, oh. I hope the PS5 Pro is safe. Keep it, keep it dry. You know what I'm saying? Every man, woman, and child, grab a Pro. Save it. Uh, <laughs> Yo, Jay, though, tell them to send it to you. You put Yo. it in the warehouse. You keep oh, it safe for man. them. Yeah. Said, yeah we said, make anything. Yo, we out here. We will send the United States Navy to evacuate. And he'll be like, grab the Pros. Grab the Pros. <laughs> <laughs> pros, women, and children. <laughs> yeah, so I sent the women and children on the way, but your yeah. focus is yeah. there. Get, get the pros. Get the pros. Hey, hey, yeah, man, at, at least I did send my condolences, right? I, I did hey, say you that sent, first. You sent thoughts oh, and yeah. prayers. That's very American. I, I know that when there's a human strategy, it's thoughts and prayers and then move the fuck on. That's yeah. what I'm doing yeah. from America. <laughs> Oh, I, 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 I said my prayers. Yo, now I want to know where my PS5 where, where Pro is. Oh, All right, you got my <laughs> prayers. Now get me my Pro. Oh shit! Oh, it's all about. Hey, so here's the next topic, real quick. So, so now Xbox community is looking for a new god because their old religion mm. fell. Right? They were pagans, you know, worshiping goats and 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 sheep mm-hmm. and all this weird shit. Now they 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 moved on to a new god, Gabe Newell. Mm-hmm. Their mm, new god mm, is Steam. Mm. They want Steam to save yeah. them. Now this rumor talking about how Xbox can potentially be like a Windows centric device that allow allows mm-hmm. applications such as Steam, Epic Game Store, and the such. And with that, they get to play all the PlayStation games by right of Steam. So number one, what's your opinion on this new movement of switching religions? for steam and number two let's say if it was true let's say if there is a steam application on the next xbox would sony allow their games to run on this xbox mm. oh no sorry but number zero you just told the lie right oh, there shit. because game oh, noel is not a new god he is a forsaken god <laughs> because if you remember during the xbox 360 and ps3 era oh, he yeah. was asked which one do you prefer and he was strongly, vehemently against the PlayStation. Oh, yeah. And he was yeah, he a god was. back then. He said, and then he got on the he PlayStation 3 stage. Exactly. Then he, he got on the scratchy. PlayStation 3 stage and betrayed his disciples. <laughs> you know? So this uh, isn't a new movement. This so is a homecoming. He ain't loyal. He ain't loyal. Game ain't loyal. He ain't loyal. He ain't loyal. But the thing is, you know, it's like when your father betrays you and he tells you he's going out for milk. Okay, but then 17 years later, he comes back and he's like, I got the milk. You know, part of you hates him, but a lot of you wants his approval. You still want him. You were kind of fucked up. You're kind of messed up. You're kind of traumatized without him there. So you know what? This is a return to, you know, this is a return home. This is a welcome home, Papa. So listen, (laughs) listen, listen. It's welcome home. Oh shit. It's welcome home. It's welcome home. At this you point, know? I'll tell you guys this, man. At this point, the Xbox guys, they, they see the end game. They see what's going on. Their console is dead. They're they're clamoring for anything. Um they'll clamor for anything at this point in time. They're desperate. Um they're desperate. To not have to accept reality and the fact that what some of us pro PlayStation gamers have been telling them about their own console has come true. And they don't want to say, well, yeah, you told me so. Um, you were right. They don't want to say that. So they will jump ship and they will go to PC and suddenly uh, proclaim to be part of PC Master Race. And they've always been there all this time. And, and they get to play all their Xbox games and their PlayStation there are PlayStation mm-hmm. ports of games on PC, and so they really won the console generation. They these guys, they will try to convince themselves that, right? We we get we still get to sit back and laugh and poke fun at them, but um, you know, they, they these guys are desperate. We've seen some of the most silliest shit going on, <laughs> and uh, I've I, I've never seen them throw the console under the bus to cap for the profits of and the revenues of Microsoft. They're out there doing that right now. So it's, it's the ecosystem it's just, of the moment to trade up. Yeah, e- yeah. That's a new word. Remember, that's a new word remember, in the street. Yeah, remember Xbox is PC and PC is Xbox, right? So they'll mm-hmm. they'll claim victory uh for some kind of way. Uh, but yeah, those guys are a non factor at this point in time. It, it's mm-hmm. it's over. 
It's shameful, yeah. actually. It's, it's embarrassing. Um, yeah. I'm like, all right, like we went yeah. from we bleed green to we bleed steam. Like, what the hell are we exactly. doing here? Like, man, exactly. this is embarrassing, right? And I even said, mm -hmm. even if there was a chance, a slight chance that this was true, yeah. you're not gonna play PlayStation games. Oh, look, you're not gonna be able to stop it. I'm like, you guys got Game Pass, right? You know the Game Pass Microsoft yeah. makes. Yeah, can you play Death Stranding on the Xbox version of Game Pass? No, nope, it's blocked. Right? Exactly. There's there's Steam exactly. on Mac, but there's some games that are blocked from Mac. So when yep. you open the store, you don't even get the chance to click on the game because they don't exist. Same thing, like yep. if you go to take Netflix in Europe or Australia, it's not the same list of Netflix movies that's in America, another region. Mm -hmm. Technology, mm -hmm. they know how to block certain content from certain apps, depending on the device, yep. the location, the region, you know? So... You open up Steam on an Xbox console, doesn't matter how it did it, it's gonna know you don't get to play these list of games, right? Do you and think, so? be, do you think yeah. PlayStation will do that? Yo, they will most definitely block absolutely. it. They will absolutely, absolutely block it. They will sue yeah. the fuck out of Steam. They'll be like, bitch, yes. this was not part of the plan. They will absolutely yeah. block yeah. any content okay. from any Xbox device. Absolutely yeah. block it. They will absolutely block yeah. I mean, they already technically did it. Death Stranding, while it's on Game Pass, it's only on PC Game Pass. Absolutely. It's not and on even, Xbox it, Game Pass. MLB, MLB as well. Remember, MLB is in Game Pass, but guess what? You can't play it on PC. I don't think they built one yet. Well, I know. I'm just saying. Yeah. Still, I, think, I, I think that one. I think once. I think they just. I think they ran out of capacity because you took a studio that made exclusives, and now they're making Xbox. Yeah. Nintendo and PlayStation. It's a Nintendo one that is really fucking them up. Oh, like yeah. I saw the that, that, that was probably just hurting. Like, Jesus they're, Christ. they're probably thinking we might as well just keep making this shit for PS4 <laughs> <Yep>. at this point. <laughs> Make it for the PS3, Jesus. The you, PS3. Can't just you might as well go buy. <laughs> yeah, I'm just like Jesus like, Christ. Fuck. Like, well, what else is shit? Shout out to Navenzor. He says Xbox players have a gaming handheld already. It's called the Leapfrog. <laughs> Xbox. Oh is, man. Xbox is gonna go extinct. That would be a bad. That would be a bad name for the handheld. The extinct, <laughs> as a joke. The extinct. The, 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 the problem for the rock. The problem that I have with it is that it's yet. Listen, and here's the thing. It, yes, Sony has a shitload of hardware out there in the wild. They got PlayStation fives. They got VR. They got the portal. They got. Uh, headphones, they got earbuds, monitors, they got all of this shit, right? And rightfully so. Because they have a large amount of, you know, 60 million PlayStation 5 owners out in the wild, they're supporting that PlayStation 5 surrounded by a shitload of accessories that sell, right? And it's selling. Now, on the other hand, Microsoft's Xbox is not selling, and yet you're still going to decide to make more hardware just for it to not sell. That's the problem that I have is you keep making hardware that nobody's buying. At what point do you say, hey, people have spoken. They just don't want our shit. I think I'm no point. I'm no point you said that, Jada, because you want to... You know, you want like we had this um, conversation before where yeah. this was months of months ago last year when we talked mm -hmm. about the perspective of them making a next generation console. And I've always said that Xbox does not have a choice but to make a next generation console. Because what we forget is that these consoles are storefronts in our home. Yes. And the second most valuable place to be, if it's not in your phone, in your pocket, it's in your living room. You know, that is why, you know, like so many, like that's why they got into the market in the first place because they knew that Sony could develop to be like the only storefront in the living room. So they were like, no, we've got to come to that. Like, we've got to have a storefront presence in the living room. And that's why I think that if any other entrants come into the, the, the console space, it will be for that position, not because they love gaming. But because they value the placement, you know, like we spend so much time in front of the TV, you know, yeah. um, that it just makes a lot of sense. And once you're already here, you're already established, like we talk about the Xbox brand, you know, because it is it, it is so far below, you know, where PlayStation is. Fair. It's so far below where Nintendo is. Okay, fair enough. But it's so far above 
everything else after that, you know, like it's still a super valuable place. So that storefront in the living room, you can't mm -hmm. miss it. You can't let it go. It's too powerful a position to be in. It's almost like it's it's always the opportunity is always there for you so long as you keep playing because they could come up with the right amount of games, the right formula of games, the right combination of hardware and software packages, and then suddenly in one generation they explode. I fully dismiss this whole entire notion that Phil Spencer put out there that they lost the worst generation to lose, as if we haven't seen things turn around. Like BlackBerry had all of the contracts, they had all of the enterprise contracts, every single person looked up to be able to own a blackberry only a blackberry back in the day was a flex i'm sure you know this jada because you're the type of person yeah, absolutely flex, you know exactly and and then what did happen a person came in and then they completely disrupted the the system so if like if a person can do it as an outside participant you can definitely do it from within you're already in the console space you already have the brand and like we keep talking about in terms of this new new found handheld space this new moment for handhelds that could be happening where we are no longer talking about handhelds with dedicated games you know we're talking about handhelds that connect to our larger library of games this is brand new environment and you are already here you're already in it like just by existing in this space you're already a competitor in it you know like I, there's no xbox handheld out there but look how long we keep talking about it because we yeah. know that they are already in this race this is a brand new track this is a brand new rule it's a bit like you know when uh when companies compete like toyota mclaren ferrari they completed formula one and it's like okay like what do i keep saying you lost in formula one you can't be mercedes whatever it is right you just can't do it but yeah. there's a new formula e starting you know and it's like, yeah. well, since you're in Formula One, you're already competing in Formula E, even if your car isn't out there, because yeah. we know you have to be there. So Xbox just cannot let go of the console. And yes, they should keep trying with the, with, with the handheld. Like, I understand your point. They are less likely to sell as much, but it could, it could be to the point where the handheld actually becomes the main driver rather than the console. Like for them, yeah. it could be inverted. They could invert it so that for PlayStation, it's the console that basically sells the handheld companion. But for them, it could be the handheld that actually sells the console. Yeah, it, it could, it could. But I, I guess I'm looking at it like this: You've been in the gaming space for 24 years. You haven't made any crossroads. As a matter of fact, you are. You had the worst console generation ever, and your new console is your new consoles are doing even less than that. That is something that the gamers are rebelling on. Gamers have spoken, right? And uh, there is nothing Phil Spencer can tell them or show them that, you know, given all of the changes that they've made, given all of the failures that they made, and the fact that they are ultimately a third party publisher now putting their games on. I thought that would that, see that's the end game there. Once you start putting your games everywhere, everywhere else, you're no longer competing in the hardware space. You're no longer competing in the console space. So why, why even be there, right? When if I could buy a PS5 and play all my my Xbox games and my PlayStation games, why even be there, right? And and so I'm looking at it from that standpoint, and I think they've lost the goodwill of their heart. I mean, they lost fucking Tim Dog, right? They've lost. Crap gamer again, right? They've lost everybody who's <laughs> holding the line. Everybody's left. There's nobody there left, right? So at what point do you and I know they're pivoting in mm -hmm. but so but if you jump back into the hardware space, um are you just there just to be there or are you actually trying to win something or do something or change something? Um I just don't see them jumping out of the, the hardware space or the console space. And then getting back in there. Once you lose that, you've shown that your loyalty is not there. You, you no longer see value there. And then you move on. And Satya and Tim Stewart have been saying exactly what I'm saying now for two years. They've been saying that this is just the direction that it's going. Whether we like it or not, it is what it is. Um, it's just up to the, you know, I, I don't know, man. It's, just, it's, it's going to be. Now, I buy everything. Right, mm -hmm. I buy everything, every single thing. Mm -hmm. I just can't see 
based right now, based on the position that Xbox is in and where, where field is and where their games are and just everything, I just don't see any value of me going out and buying just any more Xbox hardware at all. I don't care if it's a handheld. I don't care if it's a CD player. I, I don't give a shit if it's a cell phone. I just don't see that. I'll just stick with my Xbox Series consoles, and every now and then, if they do have something there that's exclusively there for the time being, I'll just play it there. Or better yet, I got a PC. Just play it on my PC. I just don't see me spending more money on a a dying a dead platform. I, I think but your maybe that's just me. Maybe, maybe that's just me. You know, maybe no, I, no, maybe, but I think I think your sentiment your sentiment is shared across many gamers. Right? Like you've spoken about it. But I think that the point is that at any moment they could pivot. I think for me, as long as you create the hardware, you will have a new opportunity to talk to gamers again and be like, this is the reason why you pay attention. And in terms of the games, you know, we talk a lot about play, um, Xbox first party games and mm-hmm. sort of exclusive deals and everything. However, most of these gaming, most of these gaming store funds are upheld by the third party. So, so long as you can con- create something that the third parties are happy with. And like um, please, uh, so like Podowak was saying, when you are sort of brand new into the hardware, like kind of like lane, when you kind of like first enter the first participant, the penalty that you suffer for not having first party support or first party games that are like super compelling is far less because there's no one else. You're pretty much the only one there. If they came out with an Xbox handheld and they were the only ones to support native games, even if it's just like a generation behind, whatever, they will still start the handheld with like, what, 3,000 games? No one's going to be checking for, oh, what new game can I play on this? You know, because they'll be the only ones there that can play games natively. Even, like I said, even if it's all the way back to the 360 games, but let's say that it's next generation so that they do games that are two generations old native so they do xbox one games and playstation 4 generation they also have like four thousand games that's available for you to play games that are current games that are still selling games that gamers are still super happy with they're not outdated games yet you know and that would be where you start so it's like yes you could say okay where's your first party but you're the only one there man no one's going to care about your first party because they just want to play GTA 5, <laughs> you know, and then they will stream GTA 6. Well, well te- technically, though, technically, all you need is a PS5 and a PlayStation Portal. And, and you can I mean, that, that, that's, the, that's the appeal of the portal. You know, that's why I think that Sony is, at the moment, Sony is kind of the first serious entrance in this, yeah. but they can be so overly, they can be so easily kind of like overstepped, you know, yeah. where yeah. if, if Box creates that native handheld capability, I think that Sony will have to respond and be like, okay, cool. We are going to create the PlayStation Portal Pro and it will be yeah. exactly as the Portal. It will stream the current generation and then it will go back to the PS4 generation and give you access to native games, even if it is a select library of optimized or, you know, kind of like certified for the PlayStation Portal experience. You know, because they might be like, hey, listen, Horizon Zero Dawn, you're not getting that portably. Like, we're not we're not doing that. We're not certifying that. You can play, you can launch it, but it's not going to give you 60 frames a second or whatever. But look at a game like Slay the Spire. Look at a game like Journey. Look at a game like Flower. They could create all of these subset of games in the store where they're like, oh, yeah, these were fun. These will run brilliantly. Like, you can play this game to your heart's content. You know, look at a world legacy. And I'm thinking mostly like single A and double A games, but even that is already way different than what we've had before. And it's still better for me than a Nintendo Switch. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah. I mean, I guess that's it for the yeah. I mean you, right. you got a good point. Last but comments. going back to people begging for Steam, uh, I don't think Steam is gonna save Xbox. I, I just I truly do not. <laughs> I don't think so either. Yeah. That's just a pipe dream. Now all of a sudden, Xbox game is love Steam. Um, last thing. So, the end of an era is over. Jim Ryan is gone. He served as CEO for five years. And he left with the final note saying that um, it says, I say right now we're at the top of our game. PlayStation 5 is well on track to be our most successful console ever across multiple vectors and i think the games and the gaming experience as you see on playstation 5 led by playstation studios are the best that we've ever seen 
Ryan added that the number of games Sony has published on PS5 at this point in its life cycle exceeds anything it has done before. So what do you think about that? What do you think of of Jim Ryan, you know, on his last moment? What do you think of his um, performance or what he did overall for PlayStation? Did he do a good job? Best CEO PlayStation has ever had. Ooh, the Spread best. Up. Ooh, Spread why up you the say best. that? Why you say that? Number one, number one. I love his his communication style. Let the games do the talking. <laughs> I, I I don't care who looks for word maps, who wants showcases, who wants this, who wants that. Aside from one miss last year, every other moment that PlayStation had when they came out, okay, actually delivered games, put games in front of us, and put games that we did not have to wait a century for. I love that. In terms of PlayStation hardware, I love the PlayStation 5 original design. I love it. Yes, I know it is polarizing, but you know what? Great art is meant to be polarizing. If you hate it, that's good too. Okay, and you are fair, perfectly And, and this is at that. the same time. But I love the original design. I don't care for the slim. I think the slim is ugly as fuck. But the original design is fantastic. The point is, this man has delivered, what, four different consoles so far? The PlayStation 5 original and digital, and then the slim original and digital. He brought us a convertible PlayStation, which has never happened before. And that thing is a brilliant idea that we all know is going to carry forward. Because we all expect the PlayStation 6 to basically just be a digital plus a disc that you can attach to it. So, love it there. PlayStation Portal, as much as I was a huge skeptic of it, as much as I can still argue against the Portal, I love the fact that the Portal is here. And I love the fact that the PlayStation portable or the playstation vita isn't here like that's actually just the biggest success of the portal right like portal you and i agree on this the fact that you did not create a native handheld is a great thing you know love that the the games this generation i think is where people are like oh this is the sticking point we didn't get enough playstation 5 games and i'm like i'm sorry but you've got more than you've ever had before this notion that you know we were supposed to have 20 games that were never going to be cross-generational and they were only going to be supported on the PlayStation 5. Like, that ne- that was never made sense because what people want to do is they want to dismiss all of the games that came out as cross-generation titles. They want to say that the God of Wars don't count, the Horizons don't count, you know, uh, Miles Morales doesn't count and everything. Gran Turismo doesn't count because they were all available on PlayStation 4. I don't care. The difference between the PlayStation 4 and the PlayStation 5 is true tremendous for you to be able to say oh yeah it's the same thing i could have played on my playstation 4 pro yeah you technically could but you wouldn't be having the same experience the playstation 5 is a big enough difference between that it'll be like when PlayStation, when pc gamers go from like a please it's from a 60 series card to an 80 series card like the way that they are able to experience the games assuming that they did you know they actually beefed up the pc in every other way is so different that it is a brand new like environment for experiencing that game i think jim ryan has done a fantastic job is there some is there things that i wish that he had done better of course everybody could always have done something better but the fact that he navigated through covid like he said playstation 5 is at the top of his game he already toppled xbox he got them to put their games on his platform that's crazy the activision the activision blizzard deal went from something that was going to destroy playstation to something that is basically irrelevant right now. I That's agree. insane. That I agree is a thousand insane. Percent. I, I agree a thousand percent um, with you. And that that really, I'll be honest, uh, I'll go out on the limb and say that Activision deal is part of the reason why um, Jim Ryan retired. Um, he knew the <laughs> position that he knew the position that Sony was in and the type of games they had lined up, the type of hardware that they had lined up, and, and, and he knew the woes that Microsoft was in. He knows this industry. He knows the gamers. He know he sees the trends and the targets. He sees what Microsoft was trying to do. And uh, after he saw, you know, hey, doesn't matter if they spend $100 billion, $200 billion or a trillion, they won't be able to compete with us because look what they're doing. They're too fragmented. Uh, they have the most studios than more studios than my, than Sony and Nintendo combined, and yet mm-hmm. they fucking don't know how to put out a decent game, right? Um, 
hardware wise, it doesn't matter. They have the most powerful, but the thing is, is uh, just kind of put together a PC. It's not really optimized very, very good. And um, we we saw Mark Cerny take down um, what's what's the guy's name? Um, um, Justin the Ronald guy who made it? yeah Jason Ronald. Yeah, take down Jason Ronald. So as long as Sony, you know, as long as they keep. You know, as long as they have uh, Mark Sony, um developing the hardware and delivering it from that standpoint, all the technology and stuff like that, the first party studios are going to keep cranking out bangers and doing what they do. Um, they, they it seems like they may have figured out the whole games as a service thing, what they want to do, how they want to do it. It seems like they're, they they kind of scale back on. Uh, maybe they was too ambitious with the twelve. Maybe they they dropped it back to six, maybe four. Um, but I'll be honest. I think this is going to turn out to be the best generation um, of gaming yet. And I'm going to tell, and I, I you know, a lot, for, for many reasons, I can see why people say no. Most people may say no because, um, you know, we've had so many cross-gen games and, and the next-gen games hadn't really been X, Y, and Z. You know, people will always find excuses, right? But for the cost of $399, from day one, you were able to get a PS5. You were able to get Spider-Man day one. You were able to get Horizon and and, and God of War and and all of the and Gran Turismo Seven and and everything else. Right? You they gave you the DualSense Edge controller. They gave you VR as an option. They gave you the PlayStation Portal as an option. They give you headsets and monitors and everything else. All of this hardware to support that. And this console is already at 60, 60, 60 some million. Uh, consoles, and now that's with us going through three years of COVID. That's with all of the the issues that's going on with the market and the layoffs and all of this stuff, right? The previous mm-hmm. generations didn't have to deal with that, but yeah. despite that, the PS5 is still outselling the PlayStation 4, right? So I do believe what Jim Ryan said as this generation is looking to be the best generation ever, and he did correct the standard. Uh, PlayStation 2 didn't sell 150 million copies, but it actually sold 160 million copies. So with that being said, you know, if you look at the trajectory, this generation, if it lasts, so let's say 2030, let's say 2028, 2030, you have to give and take because of COVID. That's kind of slowed things down. But once these guys, you saw the roadmap from the leak, just from Marvel, just from Insomniacs, right? We saw games going well into the 2035, right? So they have a deep roadmap. Uh, and that's just from one studio. What about um, Sucker Punch? What about um, you know Guerrilla Games? What what else they're working on? What about Naughty Dog and all the other stuff that they're working on? What about all of these other first party games? Um, what band is working on? We haven't we haven't started started to see this generation just really flourish. But even without that, right? Even before all of the first party stuff come, they've knocked it out the park with third party second party games we've got a ton of first party games and two including returnal and and and, and hell divers 2 is doing real good their first live service games doing extremely well right gt7 is still olympic sport it's still you know charting a lot it's still the number one racing sim that's out there for console um, it was one of the take- best live service games because it keeps giving you know new cars new tracks all for free absolutely you don't have to unlock things like you have to do for Suicide Squad. You just, you know, you just play yeah, the game. Well, you get your credits, yeah, you buy the car. Exactly, right? And, and so, um, you know, so I just, I'll be honest. I just think that this generation, um, for a lot of reasons, has nailed it with most everything. Now, I'm going to go out on a limb. I'm going to say this GTA 6 is going to push it a little bit it's going to be unfair for Xbox. I think this is just going to push it over the edge. More of those guys on the Xbox side and PC guys are going to have to go out and buy a PlayStation 5 to play GTA 6. They got to get that pro? They got to get that pro, dog? Yeah, they're going to get that pro, pro, man. Listen, you're sitting there with a 4090, but guess what? You're going to be sitting there with a PS5 Pro, too. No, they can't, they, um, can't afford, they can't afford the poor. They can't afford the poor. That's what right, PC gamers. Right. Never, never count on them. Never count yeah, on them and, for nothing. And, and another thing, M, 
is is precisely the fact that Microsoft fucked up so bad, and Xbox is in the position that it is, and its fan base is so, um, I guess, upset, um, and and it feels like Microsoft is thrown in the towel. It's exactly because of that that they will go out and buy a PlayStation Five, and they will be on GTA Six Day One on a PS Five Pro. So I think a lot of people, I get it. Last generation, it may not seem like a big leap or whatever, um, but we didn't have, you know, that that GTA. I'm telling you, it's a it's a system seller. We we always talk about it, right? We always talk about mm-hmm. system sellers. It is a system seller. I mean, and I think I, G- GTA I, is way more than a system seller. Right? GTA is like it's a game maker. It's a game changer. Like there are people that are gonna get into gaming for GTA Six. Like, let's face it, yeah. it's one of those things that's going to pull in audiences that we're never going to... It's going to make gamers out of people. <laughs> you know, like, no, that's absolutely. basically... It's, it's way bigger than a system seller. Yeah, yeah. GTA, GTA is that... You remember back in the day, we used to stand outside of stores, the line around the door and stuff like that. People get... It is one of the games that is going to have that effect again. I can see mm-hmm. that happening. I can see it's going to be on every news channel. And stuff like mm-hmm. that. And we haven't seen that in quite a long fucking time. Um, I yeah, think no. back since the, the PS the, the PS3 and the, the, the 360 era of interviews I mean, the, and stuff like that. That that game is gonna hit like a nuke. I mean, we, we haven't seen it this generation because of COVID, right? Because you know, when the consoles were first coming out, COVID mandates and restrictions stopped basically that from happening. And ever yeah. since then, there hasn't been a game that has been so big and landed after covid um to be able to give us that moment but one thing i want to say is that people completely underestimate what jim ryan did like if you remember the start of this generation xbox was supposed to dominate i feel like people do not re- remember that was the reality that was proposed right before yeah. remember before the specs came out before the design came out it was sony is in shambles they don't know what to do what are they doing then it was why are they taking so long to reveal the price oh my god it's 800 bucks all of these things all of these false narratives that were put out there and were spoken of as if they were already true and now playstation out sales not two to one but ten to one <laughs> in europe most it's crazy yeah. if you have gone to people if you if you're going to jdub the biggest you know playstation general and you have told him hey listen there's going to be markets doesn't matter anywhere in the world where xbox will be our sold 10 to 1 and not a little itty bitty you know like oh you know in a you know in, in a in a back out country like one of those little islands you have to find on the map to remember that it that it exists no, like in a major colossal market that we're going to be out so touch one. Jim Ryan did that. Like people do not yep. give him the credit. You know, when it comes to uh the PlayStation 5 Pro, because it's going to come out after his tenure, people will not give him the credit for that. Even though they like to take credit away for games that were supposedly being developed before he was CEO, but so they don't count when they are released. Like people will still be like, oh. He doesn't deserve great credit for God of War Ragnarok because that was already development before him. Okay, but then the games that come out, you know, one or two years from now, they're not going to give him the credit. They're not going to be like, oh, that's Jim Ryan's game because it was being developed when he was CEO. No. So people want to play these games to just remove wow. credit from wherever they can for this man because they don't find him to be a gamer. And I've always said, I don't want the head of the company to be a gamer. I want yeah. him to be the head of the company and even exactly. if he was a gamer i don't want him to game if i was the head of playstation you won't see me gaming for the next eight years <laughs> like honestly yeah. i won't be gaming i will be doing things to bring you games so you are gaming i won't be gaming myself because i won't have the time to okay another thing remasters and remakes people love to throw a hissy fit. they love to get the pennies in a bunch about remasters and remakes first of all this is an art form, okay? And I keep telling you, if the Godfather is allowed to be remastered and remade and we sampled and we listened and everything from all the way from like 35 millimeter film all the way to 4K, Blu-ray and 8K next, then we as an art form are also allowed to bring our games forward. Why is it that it's a, it's a sin? It, it is just this evil that people and people act as if these remasters and remakes took place of brand new games like do you, do you think that if you take away every remaster and remake that playstation has released that somehow you will have five more games from naughty dog 
that wouldn't yeah. happen though you would just have yeah. less games if you took away those games the games that had did release those would be the only ones that would have released so remasters and remakes do not take away they do not eat into the budget of your big next triple a ip or whatever you think that you're supposed to be due they are there for the people that are interested or for the people that never experienced the original one you don't have to buy it they take nothing away from you and i'm tired of people acting as if it's some evil sin in the world remasters and remakes are good they allow people to experience the thing that you love and fall in love with it in a way that they didn't get the opportunity to sorry that not everybody's as old as you sorry that not everybody had the same life trajectory as you some people miss out on some games either because they were not of age because they didn't have the means or because they just skipped them you know that people like learner from reforge gaming he didn't play the last of us originally then no no so he didn't play the last of us part two originally then the next one comes out and guess what that's a perfect jumping point for him because now he's paying attention now he's interested and now he wants to experience it at the best fidelity that he can experience it that's the same reason that when you guys are going to see a movie that is 10 15 years old you're not going to go back and buy the vhs version of it you're going to say is there a streaming version is there a 4k version is there a blu-ray version is there a dvd version what is the most up-to-date version of this film that i can experience so i can experience it in as best a fidelity as i can that's it like i watched spirited away or something recently do you think i want to go back and find the original vhs release of course not remasters and remakes are good and the fact that jim wine is a person under which this went is a great thing because it allows people to play the games that you love and they never would have loved them otherwise and then the final thing that i would say to give him the credit is that when it came to the transmedia push the fact that we have a last of us tv show that set the world on fire nobody would have thought this five years ago the fact that we had a twisted metal that did well and was somehow not a disaster nobody would have thought that the fact that we have uncharted movies all of this transmedia coverage that again allows more gamers to come into the space the last of us make gamers out of people that normally wouldn't have game the last of us made playstation gamers out of people that were already gamers but were not paying attention to playstation games so i'm talking about specifically the tv show right the fact that that came under his leadership as well he is by far the best ceo that um playstation has ever had straight yeah. up straight up and yes you can say that okay he did his part i'm not even sad that he's leaving at all i'm not advocating for him to stay an extra four years he did his job he did well he set the company up for success and it's time for somebody new and maybe that new person is going to give the people that are let's say they are not fans of jim wine maybe they are going maybe that new ceo is going to give them what they are looking for out of the brand but you cannot look back and be like oh jim wyand wasn't one of the best ones we've had yeah all right I'm, I, I agree all right so crossing over since we're on ceos uh what are your guys thought on this quote from spill spencer moving towards the future and about walking in some part way away from exclusivity and this is a quote from him during his interview with polygon he said this notion that Xbox can only be this one device that plugs into a television isn't something we see in the Gen Z research because nothing else is like that for them. Some of them will have an iPhone, some will have an Android, but all the games and everything is the same. I can still get to TikTok on both of them, at least for now. Um, Think about uh. the American. Yeah, anyway. All of their stuff uh. is available where, wherever they want. So for Xbox... Our brand pivot as we attract and maintain relevance with a younger audience is Xbox is a place where I can find the great games I want to. Yeah. So Unless they're PlayStation games and Nintendo games. So what you thought about that, that his decision he, you know, is, par is partially he, influenced on Gen Z data. Basically, he wants the Fortnite crowd. He he that he I I'll be honest. He's given up on the Halo Gears and the Forza crowd. He's given up on his hardcore base, um, the people that would be under on the our demographics. He's given up on us. There's not enough of us. He wants to go for the new guys. 
And, and the, the reason he's going for the new guys is because their requirements are a lot less. Um, they don't care where they play, how they play. They just want to play, and he can be able to give them some cheap bullshit, and they'll accept it based on the based on the data that he has versus us. We're too demanding. We want X, Y, and Z. We want graphics, gameplay. We want this, and we want it all the time. And and that's a hard pill to swallow for um, what they have to offer. They want to give you just flood the market with a bunch of. <clears throat> bunch of fluff games in their service and they just want you to subscribe and they just want you to just buy and and not ask any questions and i think um he looks at fortnite he looks at apex legends he looks at um you know roblox and minecraft and and rocket league and stuff like that and that's what perks him up because that's a lot of quick money very little effort putting in and that's what he's trying to do He's trying to do that with Xbox, but the fan base that he has is not part of the Gen Z. Um, so they're requiring more of that, and more of the hardcore stuff. And, and you know, at this point, I'll be honest: if you if you're an adult and you can't see that based on the games that he's giving you, right? Look at the games that he's he's giving you. The Grounded. He gave you the CFDs. He gave you the Pentiments. He gave you. A lot of the artsy, fartsy, kitty, cartoony stuff, that's what they've been giving you for the last decade. You're asking for the big blockbuster, you know, you're asking for the shit that PlayStation's getting, but you want it on Xbox, but he's not giving you that because that's not where the focus is, and he don't want to spend hundreds of million dollars of giving you that. He just wants to spend $10 million here, $10 million here, drop in a bucket, put it in Game Pass, Get all your money, and and that's just where it, where it, where it is. So I, but I, I do I do think that he's using Gen Z as a cop out because Gen Z didn't put Xbox on the map. Um, and and I'll be honest, Gen Z, a lot of Gen Z don't know what the hell an Xbox is. So most of those guys are facing majority of people's. They know what PlayStation is. Um, they're going to be on PlayStation, or they're going to be on their cell phone, or they're going to be on PC. Xbox is just not. I don't. I just don't see my kids don't even fuck with Xbox, right? And and uh, once Roblox came to PlayStation Five, their Series S were fucking dead in the water. They're like, yeah, that's it, Dad. Pack that shit up. I'm I'm done. And so uh, I don't know. We'll see. But um, yeah, he that's where they're going. I guarantee you, Sony's not saying that. that. Sony's like, this- hey, we'll take Gen Z, but. You know, we want the millennials too, because those guys spend a shitload of money. They spend the five hundred dollars. They buy the VR. They buy the portals and all the accessories and expensive controller and all the shit that we keep going out there. Uh, you know, that's just kind of what it is. Yo, um, Phil Spencer is a liar, man. I love this guy. Oh man, Phil Spencer is a liar. Do you, do you know why I say this? Because. Mm-hmm. Guess guess how old Gen Z is. Gen Z is from 1997 to 2012. So that means that right now they are aged from 12, right? Which is what people think that they're talking about, all the way to 27. Like Gen Z is not like some kind of like just immature, you know, adolescent crowd, you know. No, yeah. there are people that are 27 years old, oh, yeah. adults yeah. that yeah. are in Gen Z. So when he says yeah. Gen Z, people imagine, oh, they're just looking for the Fortnite people. But I'm like, no, the people with the most spending power are people that are like 18 and older. What do you think those people are looking for? They're not looking necessarily just for Fortnite. They are looking for those big bluster experiences. Because guess what? Even if you talk about the 12 year old, right? The person that's born in 2012 and right now he's playing Fortnite. What do you think he's going to be wanting to play in four or five years? In four or five years, his taste is going to mature. Her taste is going to get deeper. She's going to want to have something that is more emotional, something that is more blockbuster, something that is more compelling, something that is more complex, something that is more deep. When Elden Ring sells out like hundreds of millions of copies or whatever it is that they sold, do people really think that it's like there is no like 12 year old that's looking at Elden Ring like, oh, I want to play that? Like, even if they don't have the capacity for it right now, even if they struggle with it, they're like, do you people not think that there's some eight year old out there that is actually trying to make their way or at least has the interest in that type of game? So what are they going to do 
10 years later, they're going to want to play that type of game. People make it seem like gaming is just a wording, like this, this console gaming that we do, that we enjoy. Oh, that's just, that's just, you know, that's, that's old news. Don't worry about that. What's actually going to happen is that we are going to have all of these gamers that are bought up on Fortnite and they're just going to stay on Fortnite. They're just going to stay at that level. This will be um, J-Dub. This will be the equivalent of a person uh -huh. who was like, all of these kids nowadays, they just love Harry Potter. So there's no point in creating mature books because, you know, suddenly none of us are going to go out of the Harry Potter phase. We're just all going to want the Harry Potters, the YA, the, you know, the young adult novels. You know, we're going to all watch Twilight. And uh, what was that, um, like, erotic version of Twilight? Oh, Fifty Shades of Grey. That's what all the people want. You know, who cares about making, you know, all different types of games with all different types of people? Nobody is going to want something like a game of Ice and Fire. Like, nobody wants a Game of Thrones book. Nobody wants, you know, The Expanse. Nobody wants books by Brandon Sanderson. Because guess what? All of these kids, all they were brought up on is Harry Potter. Like, that's the level of maturity they will forever stay at. He's a liar. He's just using this data point to justify his position in a way that is unjust and unfair to what the market is actually going to have. The youngest people in Gen Z are going to look for mature, blockbuster, more compelling, more complex games than just a simple Fortnite. It doesn't mean they're going to let go of Fortnite. It just means that they are going to also have the appetite for something more. And then the older people in Gen Z are already there. People that are already 20 years and older, they're already looking for a Last of Us. They're already looking for a God of War. They're already looking for an Elden Ring or a Ghost of Tsushima or a GTA 6. So who is he talking about? Yeah. Yeah. Now you're right. Yeah. Yo, so I'm putting the video up. This is off topic. But this dude really thought he had the dunk. Hmm? That motherfucker, you ain't seen the clip I'm showing? Oh my god, I just had to post this. This motherfucker thought he had the dog. He's like, nah, chill, son. You Xbox, you ain't going nowhere. Yeah, <laughs> look at him. him. He's right like, now. yeah. <laughs> and then he realized, I'm having my entire yeah, rent over yo, here, and yo, you're over there pulling entertainment for the people. Yo, oh, my man. man. Well, look at him. My man. And then he really yeah. wait a minute. He's like, oh. and seeing that, he hit that brick wall. He knew he wasn't going nowhere. <laughs> He gonna try to throw it up there. Yeah. Oh, that dude's face! Yo, he's yeah, like, yo, I got what, this. I'm so having a very look serious conversation, like, and look at what he's doing. Look at what he's doing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we need a hostile takeover, yeah. okay? Who wants to be host? Who wants to be host of this show? Look at this, that dude. Yo, I could help it. Oh, yo, I never seen a dude who was so confident dunking in real Yeah. Oh, this I hate goes on so much disrespect for the one. <laughs> I'm having a serious conversation, and over there you're having a, a, a side chat entertaining the people, you know? Yeah. You're there talking to the chicks, telling them yeah, about yeah. everything, you're making them laugh, and I'm trying to talk about something serious. <laughs> the dude pulled yeah. the gun off. You shall not. Oh, uh, man. Hey, hey, Puerto Rock, you know him, Green? You know him? That So he played for the Rockets. That's that dude that, that, uh, that knocked up that 40 year old chick. <laughs> Oh, his friend got yeah. through. <laughs> man. Oh man. Yeah, oh God. man. You can't go against. Oh, you can't go up against oh, Rudy Gobert, man. Oh, that dude too big. Fucking dead, bro. But his face. Yeah. Look at that. His intensity. He really. Thought, yeah. He he thought he thought he, he had it, but yeah. <laughs> he was going nowhere. Gobert was like, yeah. "Nah, son, chill. Like, what you think yeah. you're doing?" Oh shit, that's just funny. Shout out to Just a Guy. Just a Guy says he is not the best CEO because he put games on PC. That was actually Sean Layden. Sean Layden. Yeah, Sean Layden, Layden did that. He Sean Layden that even said that on uh, even on, said it. on Jay Barry's name podcast <laughs> that he was he was in charge of that. So you can't. Just a Guy, welcome back, by the way. Oh uh, yeah, man, welcome back. <laughs> so you happen video. to be wrong, <laughs> but oh, welcome back. Man. But hey, welcome back. <laughs> no, but it was Sean Layden. <laughs> He he yeah. he actually said it on his first appearance on the yeah. What's Up Plastic. And that was a shocker because well, 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 Jay, Jay which, Barry which was like, wait, what? He was like, yeah. what? Everybody, even I was yeah. like, wait a minute, Sean Layden said he did that? And I'm like, oh, well, shit, this whole which time J9 and Ryan got the blame. Yeah. And it yeah. was Sean mm -hmm. who did this. <laughs> yeah, which is, oh, which is weird. 
because people loved Sean Layden, but oh, a, yeah, a lot but... of the you know Look at uh, guys Green go hate with... Jim Ryan because the games are on PC or whatever. And yeah, yeah that, that was people a hard love Sean Layden. They, they love him in in they in love protest. the idea. Yeah, they exactly they mm-hmm. love him in protest too. I mean, he did you know? I mean, he did say a couple of things that we do believe in. He still believes in it. He still believes that quality yeah. games will. Will you know? Will actually be successful. You know, you deliver the yeah. quality. You focus on the quality of the game. You deliver the quality games. Gamers expect and you're gonna have mm-hmm. a success, successful, you know, product and stuff. But man, that dunk! I can't get that shit out of my head. That shit is joke. I never seen a dude in my life be so intent on doing something and yeah. feel so bad He's other stopped. than Xbox and the Xbox yeah. community. That's like the oh, closest. <laughs> When they were so mm-hmm. intent on succeeding, and places like stop, I gotta make a meme out of that. Yeah. <laughs> stop, <laughs> you you not getting first place, dog. <laughs> Relax. <laughs> oh man, but anyway, I think that thing that goes through. Um, my main thing with Phil Spencer Gen Z comment is just pretty much. I right, I got it. You you I got you. Always want to evolve or grow, or you know do things to include. The newer fan base, right? And stuff like that. The future mm-hmm. generation, right? But right here, right now, it isn't Gen Z that's spending the money. It's us. It's primarily Gen Xers and Millennials. We're the ones that no, are but the but primary. If you listen to me, the oldest Gen Z is 27. Yeah. Like, they're not, they're not new. That Like, people talk about Gen Z yeah. as if they were, like, six years old at the moment. Yeah. But I think that average not... age is, like, 30-something. So you're talking millennial range. Uh, yeah, you are, but the thing is, Gen Z is X. still like a huge contributor yeah. to yeah. what we are doing. Like, yeah. they're not coming, they're not up and coming, they're always here. Yeah. Like, again, you know, as soon as you get beyond the age Gen of Z like 19 year olds on TikTok, exactly, we forget, exactly, we forget which, that. which, which, yeah, exactly, <laughs> which we forget that it's like, no, it's like, it's just a, it's a person right behind you. Like, if you look at the, um, who, who's always in the, in the, in the spaces, uh, I think his name is Chris something. Chris um, Righteous. Yeah, Chris Ratchet. Yeah, he's a Gen Z, like technically because he's like twenty five years old. But you see how involved he is in the community. Yeah, then you know what? Like, but when pe- yeah, you know, but when people talk about Gen Z, they talk about like, oh, they're fourteen year old. And I'm like, yeah, those mm-hmm. exist. But guess what? That's going to turn into Chris Ratchet. Like I, that's mm-hmm. why I keep say- I kept saying like my I don't know if you were listening at all, but my analogy was like with books. People started <laughs> reading with like Harry Potter and like Doctor Seuss and yeah, Walt Down. Yeah. But nobody, but nobody was like, "Oh, we're gonna start making mature books yeah. because all that one and one, all they're going to want to read is Charlie in the Chocolate Factory." Yeah, like, like my daughter, nobody my daughter said was, that. My daughter was was uh, Harry Potter, but she, you know she moved on. Exactly. So it's like this this notion that Phil Spencer is somehow going to use Gen Z as a shield. I'm like, you're a liar. You are yeah. an absolute liar because even the twelve year old and the adolescents and the nineteen year olds on TikTok. They are eventually going to go beyond that phase, and guess what? They are going to be looking for the product yeah. that you are not yeah. providing. Yeah, you know, like imagine if if PlayStation was like, oh, you know, we see that our younger demographic only cares about Fortnite, therefore, fuck the Last of Us, <laughs> you know. And it's like, yeah, but what are you going to do when our demographic gets older? Who is going to be providing the content for them as they go throughout the year? You need to be able to hit them at every single stage of their life. You need to have a person that is there for the nostalgic play, right? Like when people keep talking about, oh, bring by this or bring by that, PlayStation should bring that for those gamers. They're like, oh yeah, we're going to buy it on nostalgia. And then you also need to have products for the younger generation. That's why they have Sackboy Big Adventure. They're trying to, you know, literally have a product for you wherever you are on the spectrum of your life, maturity or whatever you're looking for from the content library. So you can't just use the fact that some Gen Z are 12-year-old and 13-year-old and 14-year-old and they are looking for Fortnite and Roblox and Minecraft and those kinds of games as an excuse as to why you are not providing the more mature experiences. It's so disingenuous. It's a complete lie. Mm-hmm. So I think I think we all agree Xbox is pivoting because they just simply fell in the console market. And why can't we just leave it at that? Just just leave it at that. They fell in the console market. They couldn't sell enough consoles, which means they can't get enough market share, which means they can't get enough game sales, first party and third party. They can't get enough subscriptions. The console concept is yeah. just not a good concept for them. That's it. That's it. Just, and let's just leave it at that. And with that, we're going to do our outros. 
We're going to start with Extreme while I show another video that we call Pay Attention To while he does his outro. <laughs> now, please. While the professor, talk, while the professor is talking, you're like the kid at the back just entertaining the entire classroom. I'm just there on the whiteboard and be like, this is how particle physics are created. And you're just like, look at this guy. Look at this guy. He tried to dunk. Look at, look at, and look then, at this guy trying to, and everybody's paying attention to me. And then I turn around and I'm like, what's going on? Are you guys done to table particle physics? Isn't it cool? <laughs> <laughs> oh shit, man. And everybody's like, oh. yeah, the hadron particle collider yeah, thingy. Uh, so uh, it's very yeah. cool. Yeah, just <laughs> yeah. 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 What you said. <laughs> oh, yeah. But you know, you know, man, for real though, I know in all seriousness, I get lots of uh um, of comments and DMs and stuff like that about you know your contribution to the podcast you know um especially last week versus guys oh they loved it <laughs> they absolutely <laughs> loved it you know so, wow, so, wow, wow. so yeah they i just i just want to say it. it wasn't a situation it really wasn't <laughs> I, I was just bored okay and yeah, when i'm bored just, we, i have to say it. something okay i'm sorry i'm sorry but i'm glad um, you're here, my brother Yo, listen, listen. I have actually one more topic I want to ask okay, about. Okay, cool. Okay. You don't talk ahead. about this, but I miss out on the intro. But I was going to say, you know, way back in the intro, you guys were talking about the live service games and how there is a deluge of games at the moment, right? So mm -hmm. you have to pick and choose okay. the games that you're playing and everything like that. And yes. my contribution was going to be that I'm actually thinking of taking a year off. Like, I just want to go through my backlog. I mm -hmm. have amazing games in my backlog i have games that i have bought whether redemption 2 is a game that i was gifted pretty much day one i still haven't played it mostly mm. because it doesn't have the 60 frames per second patch but even if it did get that patch honestly at the moment it wouldn't be a game that i'm feeling i ha i got access to Baldur's gate 3 i still haven't played it i have games that are like i'm talking legendary games like games that people every time i, I say with shame in my heart you know like metal gear solid 5 never touched it you know and i'm just like i'm looking at this year and i am loving the games that are coming out right oh also we didn't even talk enough about stellar blade i feel like you guys didn't even talk about the demo but Rock, have you played the demo of stellar blade no yeah and i'm not going to okay, okay. i'm gonna play don't. the game i'm buying a, i'm playing the game yeah and I'm yeah, gonna yeah, buy yeah, yeah. It. Don't play the don't play the yeah. demo because the game is fantabulous. It is yeah. fucking fantastic. Yeah. As soon as I, I played the little section, I didn't do any of the extra bosses or anything. I deleted that shit immediately off my heart. I've never deleted a demo so fast because I was like, this game is too good. I don't want to see any more of it. So don't play yeah. the demo. But the point is amazing. the point is this. So. The point is this. You have I have I'm I am at this point where between the PlayStation Plus games that keep adding and now they just added even more games because they added um I was gonna get this game. What was it? The Tales of Z of Kandera or something? Uh, oh, by that's on Black PS Plus. Developer. Like exactly. Now that's yeah. coming day one on PS Plus. So now yeah. it just adds to the to the backlog, and I just feel like you know what? This year, I might just let these games go. I think I just I want to get through this backlog. I want to take a year so off I, and I did that. Play at least twenty I, or twenty five games. I did that backlog. one time, and, and it's not bad because um, uh, I, I'll, I'll give you one example. So I bought The Witcher 3 day one in 2015. I did not actually get to play it till like 2022. Seven years. Because I just yeah. kept going from another game to another game. I was playing Destiny. And then by the time I realized it, I'm like, man, I never really got to play Witcher 3. So I just did. And it's absolutely amazing. And I'm like, man. So yeah. If you have a lot of top tier titles that you never get to play to, sometimes you're just going to have to just stop buying games. Start even looking for new games and just Absolutely. go just go for the ones that you already have. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, you bought them for a reason. And, yeah, and just bang yeah. them out. Yeah. yeah, otherwise you you end up being like one of those people that have lots of books on the bookshelf. And then people are like, oh, my God, you must be such a big reader. And you're like, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. that, was, that was the attempt. <laughs> that was the attempt. Yeah, exactly. You're like, I, that's yeah. what I try to do. <laughs> I mean, it's my favorite author, but I haven't read that book in 15 years, and yeah. they've been releasing games and books ever since. Sorry. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, like I, um, I'm I'm just at a point where I'm like, you know what? I think I might take this year off. Oh, and also with um, Stellar Blade, just one thing, Potter Rock, they are not going to have a photo mode at launch. That I is the only that reason a lot I'm of not games. buying. I mean, I get it. The That's photo weird. mode isn't. 
no, the photo mode isn't the priority, and you're like you're so head down in the game. Mm. The photo mode seems frivolous, but for me, when I played that demo, I was like, I'm sorry, I need a photo mode straight up. I was like, this is one of those games take, that I will not play. Of the yams. Hey, listen, mean. listen, man. Not just not just that, but the monster design, the environment, the outfits, the fashion. The hey, listen, that game needs a photo mode, and I'm I'm playing it on day photo mode. Until that that patch comes through with that photo mode, I'm not buying that game. Oh wow! But that but is just part it, of the just... conversation. Okay. Oh, just leave it on the shelf. Yeah, I'm just, just buy it. Or and buy it, like, but then leave it. There you are. <laughs> buy it, download it, so that way it could get updated. And once you get that photo mode update, boom. Hey, right. listen, I'm a physical buyer. Actually, I'm just like, oh, well, okay. nah, nah. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm still, I'm still team physical. Okay. Well, you uh, can yeah. still install uh, it. You can still install it. It'll get updated. Nah, 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 nah. That disc. thing is getting bought the day it gives me my photo mode. I need oh. the full package. Okay. okay. Well, I don't think it's gonna well, be like this. No, no, but I mean, I just upload yeah. the patch, right? Yeah, yeah, I just updated. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, uh, it it absolutely needs it. And yeah, guys, I think I'm gonna take this 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 year off. I think I just in my backlog needs its love. Okay, it needs its attention. I've got way too many games, and there's just. Oh, there's too many good games coming. Like, take a look at Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. I've decided I'm just going to wait for the next Final Fantasy VII because that combat is so intricate that I don't want to have to relearn it multiple times. You know, I, I just don't. I, I'm not... Uh, because they're more likely going to come up with, uh, what is it, some kind of DLC for it, right? And then they're going to give you Fantasy VII. I think it's Reunion that is next after this one. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to wait for the whole thing to be out before I play Final Fantasy VII. I want to play from the beginning all the way through the end, all in one particular go, so that I don't have to relearn things over and over again. So yeah, that's my that's my contribution, guys. I, I know that some of you are feeling the same in the chat, but uh, yeah, that's uh, that's me. Okay. And, um, so Whoa. let's do this one super chat. He asked a good question. Black Metal Gamer with the super chat asks, thoughts... On Stellar Blade versus Generalist Drama. Jedo? Stellar Blade Drama? Yeah. Because you know, the, the journalist thing is too sexy. What do you think about that? I, I, I'll be honest. I don't think it's no. I, I didn't think it was any drama um, pertaining to the game. You don't think so? Oh, there's going to be some drama about it. There's going to be some drama no, about it. No, I don't think so. Because here's the thing, right? Um, It's a mature theme game, and it is what it is. I mean, PlayStation, you know, like bitches with titties and ass, and, and Xbox don't. So, I mean, what is there to get mad over? I like the way you're talking about journalists and your Xbox. I like the way you're saying that, that women are being sexualized because of this game, is yada, yada, yada. Yeah, Man, we what don't I don't care. understand Listen. is they, 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 they cool with a bear fucking somebody in Baldur's Gate 3, but apparently this yeah. is them just because you see a little TNA. Yeah, I think... Listen, I think, if anything, that comes from the weirdo crowd with the... You know, you, you see them on Twitter all the time, the weirdo crowd with the um, with the anime pictures and shit like that. And, and I'll be honest, PC dudes can't say shit because they're the weirdest... Um, with the shit that they be modding in games and shit like that. I, I just, listen, if, if you're an adult and you're mature, I mean, I, I like fucking playing mature rated games, um, games that fit me as an, a fucking adult. If, if I want to play some tinky winky shit, I'll, I'll, I'll play fucking Nintendo switch. I, I don't see any controversy over it. You know, if you don't like fucking, like I say, if you don't like, uh, nice figured women, then fucking, Go fucking play The Witcher Three, you know. Fuck it, you know. Go 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 play some other shit. Um, yeah, don't say if you I've don't playing, like. I've been playing games since stopped. fucking the the original Tomb Raider, right? When when fucking uh, Laura Croft had the fucking triangle titties, right? It's that's like it's it's, it's okay, guys. <laughs> you, know, you don't have this to fucking like cry over every anger. He's like, if you don't like fucking, if if you fucking don't like this, you fucking yeah, don't fucking. <laughs> but he buy says it, it so like, softly. He says it so <laughs> softly. <laughs> I'm being honest, guys. I'm at the point now with gamers and just all the, oh. the crazy shit I see. This shit is just getting fucking crazy, man. It is why I fucking go in my own little bubble and shell and just play my games and mind my own fucking business. All the other bullshit. Oh, I don't like this. Or this is too this. Or that's too that. Don't fucking buy it. Nobody's forcing you to, to, to buy something or to play something, right? But 
I, I refuse to want to take something away from somebody just because it's not for me. You know, it's okay. You can make whatever game you want. If it's not for me, then I won't buy it. I won't partake. But for everybody else, I hope they enjoy it. And I hope it's great. People, people are starting to fucking whine over anything, and and, and I think maybe that's just social media side. I don't think that's uh, all gamers. I don't think it's a big crowd. I just think with social media and gaming, it's like we fucking start to cry and whine over fucking any little thing, and and and, and a lot of gamers are just fucking. Part of my friends, she's just pussies these days, man. Just why don't know really? Me, so, 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 fucking it was great, but when did you pardon yeah, your friends are pussies? Fucking, you're just like, yeah, yeah. you're like, oh, just, I wouldn't want to be vulgar, yeah, just fucking crying over anything, okay? You know, motherfucker, a, a character has nice, a nice rack and a nice ass. Why is that offensive? Like, why? You I'm know, gonna be controversial. Like you, you, you cry, you cry, they, and you complain they, they when the game. female character has like you remember Abby, right? People yeah. cry and complain. Oh, she's but she's it's this and that, right? Then, then, then they give you Stella Yams. Oh, her ass is too big. Like, what mm-hmm. the fuck, man? Come on, get the fuck out of here. <laughs> I, I have, I have a controversial take here. Listen, mm-hmm. as much as I appreciate Stella Blade and Eve and everything that she looks like, I'm sorry, but she's not that thick. She could have been thicker. Uh, no, you're right. You're right. You're right. I listen. Right. Get a black woman out hey, there. Girl, you know, hey, give hey, us girl, the girl, actual. Girl. Like people are like, these are Stella Yams, and I'm like, you guys haven't seen black women before because that's what we need. We need black but, but, women. But, but, to be fair, to be fair, for for Korean, she's thick. She she's, she's <laughs> thick for Korean. She's nice. She's that's nice. great. That's great and all. But I'm saying, if you wanted to create a controversy. At least mm. make it about something oh, yeah. that's Talk actually, about, yeah. you know, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm yeah. just saying, you know, like, hey, yeah. listen, uh, black women are beautiful and they are blessed, okay? And if we're going to have a controversy about, you know, body figures and everything, let's at least make it over one that actually, you know, is pushing the, pop- hey, you know what? Let me just say this. When it comes to <laughs> Stella Blade mm. and, and yeah. everything, it wouldn't be happening if it wasn't on PlayStation, straight up. <laughs> If this was an Xbox exclusive, you will be praising this game. I'm sorry, but there's this distorted reality through which every single PlayStation game has to be, uh, what is it? It's over-dramatized in the media. Like j Dog just said, when it came to The Last of Us, right? When it came to Abby, who is a much more masculine female, people went to transgender to explain yes. her body type, even though there are bodybuilders that look like her. People refuse, they, if, to this day, even though they walk past that gym in the game, they refuse to accept that she trained for years to get the body type that she did. Oh no, it's work propagand- propagandist, leftist, agendarist. We are just trying to make ugly women and everything like that. So when they represent the opposite scale of that, you have an issue. When they represent a much more feminine, much more curvy, much more supple and everything body type, you have an issue. If they came up with something, you know, that is somewhere in between, you have an issue because now it is not beautiful enough. And I'm sorry, but this is that kind of PlayStation, uh, what is it? That PlayStation criticism, level of criticism, that just doesn't happen for any other brand. Because when you look at, when you take a look at a lot of, you know, Nintendo characters, they may not be over-sexualized, but they have similar body styles. So because yeah. I guess a an Eve wants to express herself in her fashion differently than a Princess Peach, now we are going to say, oh, that is not acceptable. No. At the end of the day, the, the truth is this. These journalists want clicks. And they know that the PlayStation audience is the most attentive, most largest audience that they are going to appeal to. And they want to create a controversy out of nothing. Okay. And another thing that proves to me that this is just journalists trying to do this out of nothing. If you remember the Last of Us documentary that just came out with the Last of Us Remastered, right? Available on YouTube. Mm-hmm. And they were talking about the scene where Abby is stabbed by the Seraphites in the stomach or something. And then they were talking about how that is just propagating violence against women and everything like that. And they were like, no women wrote this scene. Like, no women were consulted on this scene. And that's when the writer was like, I'm a woman, you know, because it wasn't just Neil writing the, the script. His co writer, who was just as involved as him, is a woman. I forget her name at the exactly. moment, so I apologize. 
But the point is, she's like, I specifically read that scene. I specifically read that line. But these journalists wanted to make it seem like, oh, it's all about sexism and it's about misogyny. Yeah. And look how we are torturing the female body in order to, you know, game a gamer's emotions and everything like that. Because again, our medium is the only one that's not allowed to be mature. If any of these journalists ever say they enjoyed any Bond film for the plot, but I'm not yeah. allowed to enjoy Stellar Blade for the gameplay, like, are you crazy? Bond is basically a rapist, or at least he's been a rapist for like most of his franchise. And he's been always with the sexiest, most curviest, most attractive, you know, most nudish girls that you could ever put on, on, a, on a film without making it outrated. And people are like, oh, I love the plot of Casino Royale. Or I love the death of, you know, Palace of Solitude or whatever it is that is the latest one that we have. So, no, film audiences are allowed to have beautiful females that are starring as part of their super deep, super involved, super, you know, narrative-driven media. But we know, we gamers, we are not mature enough to handle a little bit of TNA. You know, like, no. Okay, if you can ever say that you enjoy a, a Bond film for its plot, despite having six sexy females in there, that he's always fucking, you know, that I am allowed to enjoy Stellar Blade and leave me the fuck alone. Yep. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right. There you go. Amen. The book according to Extreme. All right. Hey, good, go. good super chat. Go. But anyway. Oh, right. Also, the official stats of CCFNL. We fixed hey, the we <laughs> Oh man! All right, so there you go. So he got his one final rocks off. All right, J Dub, do your outro. Y'all know where to find me, man. At J Dub City Sixteen uh, on Twitter. Um, listen, man. I don't know if I'm gonna get back to making videos or not. Um, I, again, I think the console wars coming to the end. There's no, no more I can say that fucking. Um, Tim Dog and Kraft and the rest of those guys aren't already saying. I mean, we, Puerto Rock, you and me been doing this for a long time, man, and uh, it's just everything we said came true. And uh, it's just funny seeing these guys finally say the shit that we've been saying. It's like uh, when we said it, we were some, some ponies and some fanboys, but now that the shit's coming true, now it's, you know, now you want to be mad and kick and scream and it's like, ah, whatever. But uh, either way, I'm going to, I'm having fun with it. Um, so it is what it is, man. All right. All right, brother, man. Thank you so much. Anyway, oh, just a guy. One last thing. Just a guy said, Sean Lane put games on PC, but Jim Ryan continued the disgusting practice. I don't like neither one of them. Well, you, I mean, yeah, that's fair, but. I don't think Jim Ryan's gonna stop something that's already set in motion because now, now you're yeah, talking about you're talking it. about not that like, yeah it's already set in motion and you can't pull it back especially if the first color games were successful. Um, there's no way yeah. you could tell the you know the board and everybody yeah. and you know CFOs and everybody. Ah oh, yeah, I'm just gonna stop because I just don't like the practice and they're gonna look at you like yeah. what? Like are you nuts? They would have just fired them yeah. and put somebody else in place. <laughs> After held up this true, forget it. Yeah, and that, yeah it. That, that's definitely whatever happened. chance, yeah. whatever yeah. chance you had, it's gone. <laughs> yeah, so so yeah, Jim Ryan, there was no way he he was not going to pull that. Nobody, no one's going to be able to pull that back. That once Sean Layden mm. opened up the floodgates, that's it. You know, um, and I mean, Jim Ryan was part of the conversation. People make it seem like this year was just probably what, taken he off the street because they didn't yeah. know. Yeah, it's a you lot know, of like people he was in that there. conversation. Yeah, a lot of people. You know, he in was that there. You know, yeah. exactly. And guess what? The next year. He's going to be part of Jim Wine's generation. Like people are going to, like, they think that somehow we're going to go and fetch, like, some brand new guy from T-Mobile or whatever. Like, no, he's going to be most likely a PlayStation veteran. So they're going to be, you know, the same ones that were in their room with Jim Wine. The only difference is that yeah. now they're the head of the table. It it, it 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 may be Herman Holtz because he's still young enough. No, 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 no. Herman, Herman says you get his first, you know, though. Shit, who who knows? It, it may be Neil Druckmann. Shit, we don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Could you imagine the only person that could be more hated than Jim Ryan? Well, I, I don't, I don't think it's going to be uh, Shuhei Yoshida because um, no, no, Shuhei's already he done his time. He's he's doing his he, thing. He, he, he doesn't he doesn't want to. And it, it has to be a guy who has five years of his life to dedicate it to spinning across 
you know, three different time zones and mm-hmm. travel. It has to be a young shit. guy. Yeah. So like, yeah, it has to be a young guy who's willing has to, to be, do it. You know, this an old is guy a lot of traveling, yes. Yeah. Like yeah. Jim Ryan said, he didn't even want to fucking deal with the bullshit. So, I mean. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, no, it has, it has to be a young guy. It has to be a guy who is still got that hunger for it, you know? Um, yeah. Hopefully, it's even a, a guy who is young enough to stay there 10 years, right? Because they don't want to be doing this every three or four years. So, like, you well, have no, to have no, that standing. None of, the, none of the guys in that position have, have I, Jim Ryan was, I think, the longest. About four years? Like five, five, they all average four to five years. So, I mean, I just yeah. think that's the, That's, that's what I'm saying, that if they could find a person who is hungry for it enough to do it for eight years, despite how yeah. much it weighs you down, they'd be like, yeah, fuck it, we'll go with you. Like, <laughs> you know, yeah. even if it's someone else making the decisions behind the scenes, they'll just be like, yeah, I'll make the decision, but you travel to Japan and you talk to them. Like, <laughs> I'm trying to spend some time with my family. Exactly. Mm-hmm. All right, my brothers. Hey, thank you so much for guys for rocking out with me. Um, to the brother. chat. Hey, I'm glad you guys enjoyed the show. This was a wild one. This was a great show, great episode and stuff like that. I truly appreciate you guys rocking out with us. Um, This is your only friend, these YouTube streets, Porter Rock 77. And we will see you next week. Um, Yeah, we'll see. We'll see what other Xbox bullshit that's going on and stuff in this community. But overall, man, hey, hope you guys are enjoying the games. Hope you guys enjoy Stellar Blade. I'll be there day one. And I'm out of here. You guys take care.